So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli amin ya Rabb. So today, inshaAllah ta'ala, we begin uh, juz number seven, inshaAllah. Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altaw sahlan. Now over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about our future relationship, meaning from the time of the Prophet to the future, which is this future that we're living in today, in particular, and in general also. وَلَتَجِدَنَّا Allah says, بَعْدَ أَعُوذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَتَجِدَنَّا أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ يَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا You will find in the future, أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ أَدَاوَةً The most who are severe, لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Against those who believe. الْيَهُودُ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا The Jews and those, and those who do shirk, the pagans. And in today's world, that is India and uh, the Zionists, of uh, the ultra Zionists of uh, Israel. Okay, so uh, what Allah said is true. Who are the people who are hurting? Who is the people that are hurting the Muslims today and doing propaganda against Muslims today? Besides our own leaders, that whatever they're doing, they're doing. But in the outside world, the people, because even the uh, the Christians are doing propaganda because partly because of the leaders, the dictators are saying, "Oh, you want to." Uh, you definitely want us to stay in our dictatorship positions because if we, if we come out of our dictator, if we have democracy here, Islam will be here. So you know they they have and, and radical Islam will be here. So you don't want democracy here. The, that's the leaders. That's the Muslim leaders who have already betrayed us. But then in the outside world, the number one and number two or both number one betrayers in terms of. Uh, the, the people that are going to hurt us and are hurting us, and the Quran is proof of this that they're hurting us, is the people, the Zionists of today, and India. India is the true place of paganism, and because uh, you know, again, uh, India does exactly what the Zionists do. Oh well, you know, if we're, you know, they have radical elements amongst them, and we have to rout them out, and this is a bad religion, and you know, all this. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala predicted this and it's true. And you will find that this will be more and more true as time goes by. And you know, before Israel and uh, India didn't really have a great relationship, but now uh, Netanyahu and uh, India and Modi in India have a very, very romantic relationship. Are the people who are Jews and those who do shirk. And you will definitely find in the future the ones that are most close, closest to the true believers. الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى Is those people who say we are Christians. We are Nazirin or we are Nasara. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ This is because they have amongst them قِسِّسِينَ وَرُحْبَانَ This is because they have قِسِّسِينَ They have, you could say, priests and Rohban monks. These are the monks that still have long beards. And they, you know, they follow the old traditions, you can say. Their religion is not that influenced by the changes and the Schofield's Bible and the changes that have been brought into their Christianity in the last 50 years. And also because they are, you know, no one becomes a Rohban, a monk, uh, except that they really, really have a desire to get close to God. So, they don't, they're not proud and they're not arrogant, okay? So even for them, in that sense, the only reason a person doesn't accept the truth is because they're arrogant. So if they're not arrogant and the truth is presented to them, to the monks, then they would definitely accept Islam. And these are also then natural, or the natural allies of the Muslims in the time that we live in. So we have to see where are these monks, where are these priests uh, that the Quran is talking about. And you will find some of them are in fact so close and when they do get to find out what was revealed to the Prophet you'll see their eyes flow up with tears that oh this is in your Quran you know and, and uh, those of us in the field of da'wah have experienced this from time to time because of what they recognize of the truth and they say we believe we believe فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ So also write us amongst those people who give witnesses, who, who give witness to the truth. 
ma ma lana alla nu'minu billahi wa ma ja'a min al-haqq what is what would be wrong with us that we wouldn't believe in Allah and whatever has come of the truth? And you know, when I also mentioned last time, and this is now mentioned, tw uh, you'll see one time it says there will be nobody of the Ahlul Kitab of the people of the book except they will believe in Jesus, peace be upon him, before the day of judgment. So we pass that ayah. Then another ayah is going to come. Yukalliman nasa fil Mahdi wal Kahla. He will talk to people in birth and Kahla when he's of older age, or in the forties. And you know, Isa alayhi went to the heavens in. The, when he was 33, okay? So they will say, well, and their attitude is, And what would be wrong with us? That, you know, what's wrong with us that we wouldn't? You know, why wouldn't we believe in Allah? And whatever has come of the truth. And you know, we desire, uh, we it is our wish and of course if somebody becomes a monk they, they desire closeness to God it's a big big sacrifice you know uh, that our Rabb would enter us amongst the righteous people <coughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَأَثَابَتَهُمُ Allah. so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> because of this testimony to the truth <coughs> will reward them because of what they have said over there Allah was criticizing the people that are hiding the truth hiding the truth hiding the truth and it seems like in the future finally people will give testimony and say we have we have proof that this is the truth uh, sent to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it is possible, you know, they're finding these Dead Sea Scrolls and all these different, uh, you could say, uh, manuscripts of the past, and then some of them may come up if Allah wills, and that will speak to the truth, and they will speak to the truth. Jannat and Tajrim and Tahtil and Har Khalidina fiha in it they will remain. Wadalika Jazaul Muhsinin, and that is the reward of the people that seek perfection in their relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمِ Those people who deny the truth and make a lie of our signs, meaning belittle our signs, أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمِ They're the people of the hellfire. يَا أَيُهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُحَرِّمُوا طَيِّبَاتِ يَا أَيُهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُحَرِّمُوا طَيِّبَاتِ Oh, you people believe, do not prohibit طَيِّبَاتِ the good things. وَمَا أُحِلَّ Meaning uh, things that have been allowed for you, allowed, lawful for you. And don't transgress the limits. The limits that Allah has given, stay within them. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love the people that transgress the limits. Again, it started with this issue, it's ending with this issue almost because there's only one other major topic that will be after this topic. Uh, the the hunting and all that will be mentioned and then you'll see. كُلُوا مَمَا رَضَكَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا And eat, you must eat of the things that Allah has made halal and طَيِّب. Nowadays we, whatever little we do care about the deen, we usually care about if it's halal and what ingredients are there and if they're halal or not. But we care much less about طَيِّب even though طَيِّب, uh, you know in the Arabic language what comes last is usually of a higher rank. But what comes first is usually more fundamental. So halal is more fundamental and is the external aspect of the everything. But the internal, the real, is tayyib. If it is not tayyib and you made it halal, but it's not tayyib, then it still is problematic. Especially in the world where things are genetically manipulated and you, if you just read about these company like Montero and the others, what they're doing, you would uh, get to know. So, you know, they make them these uh, modified foods. They make them insect and weed. Insects and weeds are GMO pesticide resistant. Okay? Are GMO pesticide resistant. So what happens is that, so they're trying to uh, make uh, these things that are modified to be insect resistant, you, you know. And that means that they, they, they do a lot of things to these that you can look into the details of it. Uh, GMOs can be fortified with vitamins, they can put vitamins into it, that's one of the pros of it, one of the good things of it, but it comes with a lot of negative things too. Uh, may they may trigger allergies, okay, um, 
genetically modified animals are more efficient, but that's again a matter of a more efficient to make money. Okay, that's what it means. It means more efficient to make money. You can make a bigger banana, a, a fatter banana, but not necessarily a more nutritious banana because of the things that are done to make pesticides stay away from this stuff. It actually takes away from the nutrients most of the time. GMOs can contain antibiotic resistant genes. Okay. Uh, GMOs could have longer shelf life. That's not necessarily good. You know, you could, because these things have to travel 6,000 miles, 7,000 miles, 10,000 miles to get to the store that they're going to sell it at. Instead of, and, and instead of growing the net, the, the local economy in which locally their people, they're growing these things because that's the natural way. The natural way is, you know, to have your local food and to sell it to your local people. That's the natural way. What's the point of bringing in bananas, let's say, from China, right? That just serves, you only do that because of big business and inter multinational uh, uh, corporate corporations. And, it, and they do it at a low cost because they're, they're getting such large volumes made. And they got cheap labor there, which is slavery, by the way. And then they're selling it. And so you're eating food that, you know, like chocolate. Is, is food that is basically based upon slavery. The iPhones, the same thing. And so, you know, we're, we're, we are really contributing to child abuse when we're eating GMOs, and there, there's a lot of information about that too. So it, it takes away from the uh, the concept of it being tayyib, you know, from the concept of it being, uh, um, uh, you know, of, of being uh, pure. Eco-friendly. So they're made... Uh, eco-friendly too um, <coughs> and these gen genetically mo modified foods they're like um, they are they have a longer shelf life uh, right they have a longer shelf life because they have to what they have to travel uh, they have to travel make the food travel for thousands of miles maybe 10,000 miles you know and uh, the, the food has to travel for um, so long, like 10,000 miles or so, and what happens as a result of this genetically modified uh, food is that, uh, number one, uh, the big companies that make so much of this food and they bring down the price and they do it by, number one, child abuse, child labor, food, the food market is one of the major places where uh, children are put to work that shouldn't be working, child labor is used to reduce the price, so they get, let's say, these bunch of bananas that are now going to fly 10,000 miles away so that people can eat them. They do this with chocolate. They do this with a lot of foods. And, you know, iPhone does this with technology, for example. Get cheap labor in, in China and so on and so forth. So, halal and tayyip. So, here's an example of child labor, labor in agriculture. So, they're genetically man, uh, manipulating the food. Why? So pesticides won't come to it, which uh, which affects then the nutrients, okay? And the, the the because they don't want bugs to come into it, so they want to make because why? Because they want so much of this that they can send it to all parts of the world and make money and basically have a monopoly of some sort, like this Mon Monetera Montegra, I think is the name of the company. And then to do reduce the cost, what do they, they use? Child labor. To reduce the cost, they use genetically modified food, so it's bigger, it's more, it's it looks bigger, it weighs more, for example, then it costs more, makes more profit per product, per item. So now, when you look at, for example, what the Quran is saying from that perspective, كُلُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Eat of the things that are halal and tayyib. It's not doesn't sound very tayyib, very wholesome, when you consider all the injustices done to bring that food from all that distance to you. And then it's also hurting the local economy because, you know, instead of having farmers locally, which should be the natural way, that they're local farmers everywhere. They, they, they're the ones that are producing the local bananas. And another thing that does is that only because they're, for example, oranges. They're like thousands of different types of oranges, like hundreds of different types of apples. But we only get certain brands because... Those are the ones that make the most money. They produce the fastest. They're the most easily gen genetically modified. And so we have like an extinction crisis of seeds, 
you know, because the seeds that are being used are the ones that the corporations are putting forward. And now they're even going to the next level in which they give you the seeds that will grow the, the harvest, but will not give you a seed. So you have to go buy from them again. And people are being forced by the IMF to do that. So instead of having local uh, harvest, you're buying from the multinational companies and, and then you're being forced by the IMF to buy from these multinational companies. And in India, it ended up making farmers do suicide. Anyway, so, And eat of the risk that Allah has provided you. And uh, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in who, in whom you believe, in whom you claim you believe. Now, the same issue has been raised again. This issue was uh, raised in Surah Al-Baqarah. Now it's being raised here again, but with a little bit more. Uh, over there, it just said, you know, it, Allah knows that when because the Arabs used to talk in such a way, Wallahi this, and Billahi this, and Allahi this, and, you know, always swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, just Jews found this very offensive. The Jews found these constant swearing of the Arabs to be completely against the, the teachings of the Torah, because the Torah says don't take Allah's name in vain. Don't take Allah's name without any, like, it, it should be purposeful why you do that. So they would just, and this was one of the, but over here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Allah knows when you're just an Allah, because they're taking Allah's name, right? So Allah understands that when it's just a conversation compared to when it's an actual oath. And if it is an actual oath and you broke the oath, this is the expiation for that oath, okay? So that is what is being mentioned here. لا يؤاخذكم الله بلغوي في أيمانكم. Allah subhanahu wa taala will not take you to task for the love. You know, just what you you can say. Love means entertainment or in vain or without paying attention. في أيمانكم in regards to your oaths. ولكن يؤاخذكم بما أقدت أيمانكم. But Allah subhanahu wa taala will take you to task when you actually meant it. You know, in your heart when you were mean, meaning to make that as a real oath. Okay. فَكَفَّارَتُهُ تَعَامُ أَشْرَةِ مَسَاكِينَ مِنْ أَوْسَطِ So like an average, you know, size, an average size or a middle size, you could say. You know, there's the there's the deluxe dish and then there's the dish that's the, you could say, the most bare bone dish and then the middle one, okay? So the, uh, 10 masakin should be fed uh, based upon what would be considered a middle uh a middle, uh, uh, you could say, class food. What what ma tut imuna ahlikum au kiswatuhum au tahrir rakabatin. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala said, average of what ma tut imuna ahlikum au kiswatuhum uh, of whatever you feed your family. So middle of what you feed your family au kiswatuhum or their clothing them, meaning whatever clothes that they. Uh, so based upon that, أو تحرير رقبة so or or freeing a slave or you can say فمن لم يجد فصيام ثلاثة أيام and whoever can't and doesn't have the ability to do this can't do this he has to fast for three days ذلك كفارة أيمانكم إذا خلف إذا حلفتم that is the expiation that you need to do if you made an oath and you promised something to do something and you made an oath with it then you swore upon it and you didn't do it, you have to do this. Allah says, look, so the, Ma'idah, the same story started with the ayyuhal ladina awfu bil uqud. Oh, you people believe, keep your promises. Over here, this is being emphasized here. Wahfazu aymanakum, protect your oaths. Kadalika yubayinu Allahu lakum ayati la'allakum tashkurun. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes things clear to you, so you thank Him. So you should say, thank you, Allah, for telling me that I should keep my promises. Of course, we already know that, but you know the fact Allah said it to you should be you should be thankful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that Allah is guiding you to be in the right way. Ya ayu aladina inna ma hamru wal maysaru wal ansab ansabu wa azlam rijsum min amal al shaytan. Oh, you people who believe indeed, hamar alcohol. Hamar means you know hamar is the dress the women wear. So it means a covering when something covers your mind. Basically, when you intoxicated. intoxicated Anything that covers your mind in a negative way, then it is not allowed. 
wal maisir and then any games of chance wal ansab okay and then ansab is the altars where you know you you sacrifice things for on in the name of other than allah or in the name of idols wa azlam and then the you know uh the, th casting the lots on the arrows meaning looking doing things of luck and and trying to predict the future and things of this near superstition you can say rijzum min amal shaitan these are evil things so they're from the actions of shaitan fajtanibuhu so stay away from all of that la'allakum tuflihun so you may be thankful <coughs> إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانِ أَنْ يُقَعَ بَيْنَكُمْ عَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْحَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shaytan, he only, what is his goal when he makes you drink, when he makes you do games of chance, is to increase your enmity and hatred towards one another, and rage towards one another. And so what you'll see is there's a lot of studies about, for example, the relationship of why alcohol encourages us to argue okay in fact uh, there is you know uh, there is in texas i know that there is a term they use um for drinking alcohol it's it's i forget what it's called it's called something the bottle of courage or something like this but basically means if you drink alcohol you'll have the courage to say things that you didn't that normally you wouldn't say okay and how alcohol can make us aggressive there's also studies on this so shaitan wants to create you know problems for us through intoxication through gambling and you know you, you, it makes a person he won something then he lost something he has to owe somebody and there's debt and, and it's all just uh, so uh, all of this takes you away from allah wa anis salah and from the prayers so now will you stop this immediately stop this you anything that stops you from the path of allah whether it is halal, haram, makru, doesn't matter. Stop it. Right? Anything that stops you from the path of Allah, remove it from your life. Atiullah wa ati rasul, obey Allah and His Messenger, wahzaru, and beware. You know, there's danger. It's dangerous if you play with your relationship with Allah. فَإِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا عَلَىٰ رُسُلِنَا بَلَاهُ الْمُبِينَ and if you turn your backs and away from, and you turn away from the Prophet Sallallahu then just know it. His job was only to convey the message clearly to you. لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جُنَاهٌ فِي مَا تُمِعُوا إِذَا مَتَّقَوْا Okay. And then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, there is no blame. لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جُنَاهٌ فِي مَا تُعِمُوا there's no blame upon them for what they've eaten in the past. Okay, everybody gets worried about what about my past? But if it's like this, what about? The, don't worry, just move forward. Now here are the stages of of what happens if you have taqwa. Taqwa takes you from one stage to the next stage to the next stage. You have taqwa, and then you reach the stage of iman. Iman is a stage where you have complete conviction at a conscious level. Not at a subconscious level, not at a cultural level, not something that is socially ingrained into you. You believe in Allah because society told you to believe in Allah, or you believe in Allah because your parents told you to believe in Allah. You know, but rather you believe in Allah because you have come to that iman, you have come to believe and have that conviction for yourself to the point where you're willing to sacrifice for it and give for it and die for it. Yeah, إذا إذا and then when you have Iman and Amilu Salihat, then you have more Taqwa, Thumma Amanu, Thumma Taqawwa Ahsanu, then you have, from Iman you reach to the level of Ihsan. Ihsan is that experience of God where you feel like as if Allah is watching you, or rather you are even seeing Allah. You, you have that experience when you see something beautiful and you, you it is in your mind because you've been reading in the Quran لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ for Allah is whatever is in the heavens and the earth and you're reading this over and over again now you see something in the sky and it reminds you of Allah and it's beautiful and you're amazed and you're like wow subhanallah and that is that pure subhanallah that is that is that experience of realizing at that moment it's like you're seeing the work of God yourself you're witnessing what Allah has done and so that is Ihsan. So no, not everyone can stay at the level of Ihsan forever, but the idea is to go from Iman to Ihsan 
and try to stay there for a, you know a few seconds, a few minutes, a few moments, a few maybe hours, and then you know you come down to iman. You have still believe, but then you have another experience at another time. Maybe you heard an ayah of the Quran and that gave you that experience. So that's how. But the real thing is to build taqwa and build taqwa and pray for taqwa and pray for taqwa because taqwa is, you know, really the driving force behind this. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu O you people who believe <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is here saying لَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ كُمُ اللَّهُ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الصَّيْدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test you something of hunting because now they're going towards Hajj for example and uh, they, uh, let's say, have their ihram on, and there is animals right in front of them, and they're hungry, now they can't kill them, okay? Because your hands can reach those animals and kill them, with just the arrow or the uh, spear. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or whatever your spears can reach, and whatever your spears can reach, because you can throw a spear and then kill the animal, and then you did something you weren't supposed to do. لِيَعْلَمَ Allah, So Allah makes it clear, مَنْ يَخَافُهُ who, so, who is fearing him بِالْغَيْبِ in the unseen. فَمَنْ اِعْتَدَى بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَلَهُ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And whoever crosses the limits after that for him is a painful punishment. يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا لَا Okay, here. This is very important. Over here now, Allah is going to give the expiation, the kafara, just like Allah did for the oaths. Now here is also the expiation for if you do kill the animal, then what are you going to do? Again, the rep it repeats itself. Ya ladina amanu la taqtulu sayyid wa antum hurum. Oh, you people believe, do not kill the game of chance. Sorry, do not uh, kill the animal. Do not hunt wa antum hurum when you are in a state of ihram. Wa man qatalahu minkum muta'amidan fa jaza'u mithlu ma qatala min al-an'ami yahkum bihi dhawa adlim minkum. So if you kill one of the animals, right, then you have to kill a similar animal. And who will decide that you made a equal balance? Let's say if you killed um, a, uh, let's say a deer. So two witnesses have to confirm that now you killed another thing that would be at least equal to that same type of deer that you already killed. So yahkumu bihi dhawa adlim minkum hadiya baligat al ka'bati wa kafaru ta'amu al miskin and then so and then you have to make sure that that food that uh, it reaches the uh, ka'ba okay so wa adl minkum two just people that's very important two just people that are known to be just and if he can't do that then what did aw kafaru ta'amu al miskin or he makes kafara by feeding the miskin aw aw ya'dilu ذلك أو أم تعامل مسكين أو أدل ذلك صياما and or then what you do is those two people will give a judgment of how much you are going to fast to equal to that thing that you killed while you were in the state of إحرام so two people that are just can judge make a judgment according to the customs and traditions and the market value of that time okay so liyuziqa wa bala amrihi, so that they, so that he will then taste a part of the, the crime that he did. So afallahu amma salaf. Allah will forgive you regarding the past. Waman ada, whoever returns to this type of behavior, which is killing the animal while you are in the state of ihram. Waman ada. So what will happen? فَيَنْتِقُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ Allah will take revenge on him. وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ ذُو انْتِقَامٌ And Allah is mighty and He is ذُو انْتِقَامٌ He is able to take and uh, taking revenge. أَحِلَّ لَكُمُ الصَّيْدُ الْبَحْرِ Now, obviously if you're going for Hajj, the sea, uh, fish, fish is allowed for you. Now, Bahar, because it says Bahar, the majority of the people go to the sea when it comes to food is the fish. So the Hanafi stance is, since the purpose, the major purpose is what defines the everything else after it in the Hanafi fiqh. So they say everything, it doesn't refer to everything, it refers only to the fish because that's the reason you go to the, that's the biggest reason, that's the main reason. This uh, also applied to when we were talking about lahm al-khinzir. The reason you eat the pig is for the meat. 
So that means the whole of the pig is haram. So it's over here is the same idea is because you go to the sea when you say somebody's out fishing in the or you know we call it even fishing but if somebody said we're out in the ocean getting food generally it means fishing uh, now but the other scholars of Islam say no 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 everything in the sea is allowed Allahu a'lam I'm not going to go into the details of that argument right now but arguments for both sides exist and both sides have good arguments. And that uh, food has benefit for you. You know, now seafood is coming out with so many medical benefits and so on and so forth. And, and for the people that are traveling. And then what? The, uh, you cannot do this. The, the hunting of the land, in land animals. Saidul Barri, Madumtu. As long as you have the ihram on, you cannot uh, hunt the animals. Uh, okay. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ الَّذِي إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ Fear Allah to whom you are going to go back. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الْكَعْبَدَ بَيْتِ الْحَرَامِ قَيِّمًا لِلنَّاسِ وَشَحْرَ الْحَرَامِ وَحَدِيَ وَقَلَائِدِ Now remember, four things are mentioned here. Standing for the people, standing in prayer. وَشَحْرُ الْحَرَامِ So the Kaaba is sacred because of because of the people standing in prayer because of the shahr al-haram because of the hadiyah and the qala'id so because of the uh, of the of the animals that are going to the kaaba to be sacrificed and the uh, animals with the tags that are marked out animals marked out to be sacrificed in the name of allah ذَلِكَ لِتَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ this is so that you will know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows Whatever is in the heavens and the earth, what Anna Allah bikulli shayin alim, and Allah has the knowledge of all things. Allah knows all things, and so Allah is saying of the people, of the things the Arabs used to do, these things will remain. But then Allah mentioned some things that need to be completely removed. Wa alamu Anna Allah shadidu liqab, because Hajj should not have anything superstitious and these things in it. So now Allah will come to that. But these things you you should continue. These are the right things that you were doing. This is according to the, you could say, the manasik of Ibrahim wasalam, But then you added things to it, so those need to be removed. So this is what Allah knows all things. Allah knows what are the things that are right in what you were doing. And Allah knows the things you were doing that were wrong. Know that Allah is very powerful in taking revenge. And Allah is ghafur rahim. Look, it's only on our messenger to convey. Allah knows fully what you reveal and what you hide. Look, not are the same the pure things and the unpure things. Even the if the khabis things, like these modified food, foods, they look delightful for you know the banana that's modified. And the naturally grow, grow, grown uh, uh, banana, right? The one that is modified looks oh, it's so looks so much beautiful. It has no blemishes, no brown, you know, the brown thing on it. And the a banana that grows organically and usually locally, if it's done right, then you know it has those brown blemishes on it, right? So, uh, so the point here is is that the good and the bad are not equal. And even if the bad looks better, it looks delightful, it looks good, but it isn't. So this is the example of the modern day, uh, not tayyib. This is the normal banana, you see the marks there? And this is the modified banana. See, there's no marks, all taken out, genetically modified. And you know, the, the peel many times has these nutrients that now you're not going to get because they've been modified. And they've been modified this way for many reasons, to keep insects away and so on and so forth. But then they have, you, you know... And it, it has its uh, effects, you can say. So, la, but over here, it's talking about superstitious things as it will come. لا يستوي خبيس the the dirty or the unclean things are not, or the evil in the طيب are not equal. لو أعجبك كثيرة الخبيس Even if the many evil things or the many uh, dirty things uh, please you. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ Fear Allah, O people of understanding, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you may be successful. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being deceived 
of seeing something that's khabith, that's evil, and we we are delighted by it, thinking it's good. Ya ayuhaladina amanu la ta'asalu an ashya in tubdalakum tusukum. Wa in ta'asalu an hina yunazzilu al-Quran tubdalakum afa'allahu anha wallahu ghafurun halim. Now what happens is, the Prophet is with Jibra'il, and the Jibra'il is answering to the Prophet sometimes, and this is in many riwayahs. Somebody is asking a question. In fact, there is a narration. The Prophet was giving an answer, and then the Prophet modified his answer based upon what he heard from Jibra'il. Okay? So, Allah says, Ya ayuhaladhina man la tas'alu an ashya in tubdalakum tasu'kum. Don't ask more questions than needed, because if you do, and revelation is coming, or Jibreel answers you, then you're putting yourself in difficulty. Like an example of that in, in the Sunnah of the Prophet is, uh, you know, in this, uh, hajj, hajj, uh, in this, whoever has the ability to go to Hajj should do Hajj. One of the companions asked the Prophet وسلم, that should we do it every year? And the Prophet turned away. He didn't answer. Because if he answered, it could have been difficult upon the Muslims. You know, the same thing about, for example, the, the Prophet said if I, he had prayed more than three nights, in Ramadan, he was afraid it would become fard, right? So, tas'alu anha, and especially if you're asking something while Qur'an is being revealed, then it might actually give you the answer, because Qur'an was always giving answers to the people, yes, alunaka, O Prophet, they ask you this, and O Prophet, they ask you that, and Allah is answering this, so now somebody asks another question, Allah will answer it and put you in difficulty. So don't, don't be careful. La tas'alu an ashya, don't ask about things if you don't need to. In, okay, tubdu uh, lakum afa Allahu anha. Then Allah may Allah forgive you, or Allah forgives you. Uh, you know regarding this. Okay, about this. Wallahu ghafurun halim. Allah is ghafur and halim forbearing. Qad saala qawman min qablu min qablikum. Already people have asked questions before you. You know, thumma asbahu min al kafirin, and they made things by their questioning and questioning. They made things. So difficult for themselves. See, Allah has every anything Allah is silent upon is allowed. Generally speaking, it's, I'm not talking about ibad, ibadat, but muamalat. The rule is anything Allah is silent on, anything Allah is silent on is allowed. That's it. قَدْ سَعَلَهَا قَوْمًا مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ ثُمَّ سَبَحُ بِهَا كَافِرِينَ. Then they were rejecting it because now it became too difficult for them. You know, like the people mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Who were told to sacrifice a cow and they kept asking questions, kept asking. And so the, it, it became more, instead of being broad and generally okay, it became more and more broad. Instead of being broad, it became very restricted over time. We should thank and pray to Allah for the companions of the Prophet who didn't do that. Because then they gave us a deen that didn't have those restrictions that would have otherwise been there. The maximum that has happened in our deen by the companions of the Prophet is they were arguing, so the day that we would have maybe known Laylatul Qadr, now we don't know. So this, you know, this. قَدْ سَعَالَهَا قَوْمًا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ ثُمَّ أَسْبَهُمْ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ Okay, so now here, over those are the things that are allowed, now here are the things that are not allowed. مَا جَعَالَ اللَّهُ مِنْ بَحِيرَةٍ مَا جَعَالَ اللَّهُ مِنْ بَحِيرَةٍ وَلَا سَائِبَةٍ وَلَا وَصِيلَةٍ وَلَا حَامٍ These are the four, you could say, categories where uh, Bahiratin was an ant, it was the camel with the slit uh, ear. So certain conditions were met. Maybe and, and uh, as as saibin um, saibatin uh, was a a camel that was let loose uh, in the name of an idol. Uh, wasilatin was an animal that had given birth to uh, uh, two females or two twins in a row. Okay, or something like this, and it was given in the name of idols. Wala hamin a male camel that is free from doing work. And you know, there's so many aqwal, so many sayings, so many statements that it's hard, it's going to be hard to go into the details at this moment regarding this issue. But, but the bottom line is, these are the superstitious things that have to be do, done away with. Allah has not put, this is not part of the Sharia, not part of Islam. Those people who deny the truth, right? They invent lies against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa aktharahum la yaqilun. Most of them have no brains. Wa idha qila lahum ta'ala wa ila ma anzal Allahu wa ila rasuli. So when it is said to them, okay, come on, come to what Allah has sent down, 
to his messenger. Qalu, they say, well, now you have these this culture and you have these customs and you have these traditions. And so what do they say? Qalu, hasbuna wa ma wajadna alihi abana. Enough for us is what we found our forefathers doing. And this is what the world does. It, the world becomes tribalistic or nationalistic or ethnocentric. And we're going to do what we far found our forefathers doing. You know, أَوَلَوْ كَانَ آبَاءُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَحْتَدُونَ Even if your fathers knew nothing and they were not even guided. Yeah, this is an ayah that is very misunderstood. And in fact, you know, it's so interesting because Abu Bakr radiallahu anh has very few narrations. Uh, and this is one of the narrations of Abu Bakr where he makes this ayah clear. Especially the first part of that. يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ Abu Bakr heard that people are interpreting this ayah to mean that all oh, people upon you is to only worry about yourself. Worry about yourself, don't worry about others, is how people took it. So Abu Bakr gave, stood up and gave a khutbah. And he said, this, I've heard this ayah being misused. This means that, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ لَا يُضُرُّكُمْ مَنْ ضَلَّ this ayah means Abu Bakr radiallahu anh said that you have conveyed the message to others, you have done your job, you have done Amr bil Baruf, Nayyad al Munkar, enjoining the good, forbidding the evil, you did this, and then if they stay astray and don't come to the uh, right path, then la yadurrukum, then they will not be able to, what they do will not hurt you in any way, meaning on the day of judgment. But you still have to worry about yourself, but you have to also worry about what's happening in the society around you. This is not an ayah that tells you that you can just worry about yourself and not others. Oh, you people who believe for you is to, you could say yourself. And how else do you protect yourself? You have to do the obligations, which includes doing da'wah to others, enjoining the good, forbidding the evil and all that. They la yadurukum. It will not hurt you, mandalla. Whoever goes wrong, whoever is on the wrong way, he's not gonna hurt. He's not gonna hurt you or in any way if you're on the right way. You're doing the things you should. In Allahi marjiukum jamian, and all of you will go back to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Fayunabbiukum bima kuntum taalamun, and Allah subhanahu wa taala will then tell you of all the things that you used to do. Ya yuladina amnush. Okay, so here is. Uh, an issue of the um, the uh, wasiya, okay, which is the one third that you're allowed to proportion according to your choice. So two thirds goes according to the laws of inheritance we read into the nisa. This is about the one third that you could choose whoever you want to give that your wasiya to, whoever like some charity or some masjid or whatever, right? So so now. There is a chance, you know, the person was traveling and he got two people and he gave them a testimony. Uh, he gave them a testimony. And, oh, by the way, the testimony should be of, uh, you know, Zawar Adl Minkum, two of the just people and in your local community. Now, obviously, if he's traveling, then he has to choose people that are not of the local community. But now this person dies and now you hear, oh, person X said, give this much of my wealth to this cause or this person or whatever. And now it could raise a dispute. It could be a problem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a way to help uh, determine, you can say, that what is the, uh, the truth. Now it could be that these people are lying. It could be that they're telling the truth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a way that would, uh, you can say, that has a lot of wisdom in it. And this wisdom can be applied then to other uh, uh, issues and other types of disputes, okay? <coughs> uh, so if there's a dispute, then what to do? تَحْسِبُوا نَهُمَا مِنْ بَعْدِ الصَّلَاةِ Then you detain them after prayers. Why after prayers? Because you just stood before Allah. So you'll have some taqwa before you lie. فَيُقْسِمَانِ بِاللَّهِ And they will, those two that were, that were while he was traveling, for example, and they heard the testimony, they're, they're giving a testimony, so they will both swear by Allah. What will they swear by Allah? إِنِرْتَبْتُمْ If they were in doubt, so now they'll swear, لَا نَشْتْ 
We have we're not doing this to get some money. Even if if it is uh, somebody near to us, right? We're not benefiting from this anyway financially. <coughs> Nor will we hide the testimony of Allah. <laughs> if we did that, we would surely be of the wrong people. So these two people that heard the initial testimony, whether they heard it or not, made it up or they heard it, they give the testimony after salah, if there's a dispute, that yes, uh, we swear by Allah, we're not purging ourselves, we're not lying, this is what it was, we're not doing this for financial benefits, we have no financial benefits. Now if the people, the local people or the family people, they still, now they may hear this and say, okay, yeah, you know, he, this, they may believe them. Now if they don't believe them and they doubt the testimony of these people, <coughs> so what to do? فَإِنْ أُثِرْ عَلَىٰ أَنْهُمَا إِسْتَحَاقًا إِثْمًا So if they find out and they discover that this person has done perjury, they, they're lying. They're, they're lying under oath. So what can be done? فَآخِرَانِ يَقُومَانِ مَقَامَهُمَا So then let two other people come in their place. مِنَ الَّذِينَ إِسْتَحَقَّقْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those people of the family that have the biggest haq right let them come and also swear by Allah shahadata billahi shahadatuna a haqqu min shahadatihima then they will they will say shahadatuna a haqqu min shahadatihima our testimonial is more closer to truth than their testimonial <coughs> وَمَا أَعْتَدَنْ So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا أَعْتَدَيْنَا إِنَّا إِذَنْ لَمِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ And we have not transgressed, otherwise we would be of the wrongdoing people. So this is in regards to if there is a dispute about the wasiyah portion of the testimony, which is the where a person is free to mention that I want my wealth to go here or there. Okay? ذَلِكَ أَدْنَا أَنْ يَأْتُ بِالشَّحَادَةِ this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then now gives the, you could say, the wisdom behind this. Because if the first two are lying, then they know the others can come and take testimony in their place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is, it is more objective, you could say, that they will give a testimony according to what was really said because of the fear. أو يخاف أن يرد أن ترد أيمان بعد أيمانهم. Otherwise, other people are going to stand and give oath against their oath. So this fear is there. So that fear will keep them away or help them keep them away from saying something false. But in the end, you know, this is dunya, and everything will finally go to the hereafter. So what taqullahu wa smau? Fear Allah and listen. Wallahu la yahd al qawm al fasiqin. But in the end, Allah doesn't Allah doesn't guide the people that have evil intentions and are evil doers. يوم يجمع يوم يجمع الله الرسول ويقول ماذا أجبتم. And the day where Allah subhanahu wa taala will bring the Rasul, all the Rasuls, and say, what was the what have you brought back? What was your response? People that you were sent to. They will say, Oh Allah, we don't know what they, how they responded after after the prophets died. We, they are saying about themselves, Oh Allah, we have no knowledge of what they did after us. You're the one who the, has the knowledge of the unseen. Now this is a prelude to what's coming, which is the discussion about Jesus. And when he will be asked about, Did you say this to the people to say that you're God? And that discussion will then take place. وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرِيمْ أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ عَلَيْكَ Oh, when, remember when Allah will say, or when Allah said, or when Allah will say, يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرِيمْ Or Isa, the son of Mary, أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ عَلَيْكَ Remember my favor upon you. وَعَلَى وَالِدَتِكَ And over your mom. إِذْ 
When I strengthened you with Ruh al-Qudus, meaning Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَحْدِ وَالْكَحْلَى And what? I will have, meaning Jesus, will speak to the people in the cradle and when he's old. This is similar to the ayah that no one will die of the people of the book except they will believe in him before the day of judgment. So this kahla, he will be an older man, more mature older man. This will be when he comes back. إِذْ عَلَّمَكَ الْكِتَابِ And we taught you the book. وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَالتَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ So here we taught you the kitab and hikmah. Ay, meaning we taught you Torah and Injil. Because Torah has the law, hikmah is in Injil. And Quran has both. So it can also mean kitab wal hikmah is like it says about the Prophet. He teaches the, يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ wal hikmah. He teaches them the book and the wisdom. So that can be referring, this first two can be referring to the Quran, then Torah and Injil. And also, Al-Kitab can be Qur'an, Hikmah can be Sunnah of the Prophet, Torah and Injil. So he will have the knowledge of the Qur'an, knowledge of the Sunnah of the Prophet, knowledge of Torah, knowledge of Injil. Or, uh, Al-Kitab wal-Hikmah, Ya'ni, meaning Torah wal-Injil. Is, تَخْلَقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَيْهَةِ الطِّيرِ بِإِذْنِ So he would make the shape or model of a bird and then, بِإِذْنِ uh, 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 and he would blow into the bird uh, after that and it would become an actual bird by the permission of Allah and he would cure the blind and the person of leprosy by the permission of Allah by my permission and when you took out Allah will be reminding Isa I did this for you and I did this for you as a prophet of Allah to show these people you're the messenger of Allah by by my permission, it wa id kafaftu bani Israel anka. Here again, id kafaftu bani Israel anka. And when Allah subhanahu wa taala says, and when I kept bani Israel from you, is jatuhum bil bayinat. When you came to them with clear signs, kept them from what? From killing you, from getting you, getting a hold of you, to doing what they intended to do with you, which is to kill you. فَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ And what was the excuse that they used to kill Jesus, peace be upon him, or try to get a hold of him? They didn't actually kill him. But uh, the excuse that they made, meaning from the Sharia, they had to find something in the Torah, and at this point even the Talmud, they had to find something to accuse him of, and that was سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ He is a magician, he does these miracles that he shows us by magic, this again will uh, this issue will come up again later, but over here. So Allah subhanahu wa taala talks is rec uh, re uh, recounting for Isa alayhi salatu wasalam all the favors he had done to him, uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa taala says, وَإِذْ أَوْحَيْتُ إِلَى الْحَوَارِيِّنَ أَنْ آمِنُوا بِي وَبِرَسُولِي And remember when the decide the word here is wahi, meaning inspiration, revelation so on and so forth. But it means maybe they had a true dream. A group of them, they all had the same true dream. Like in the case of the companions of the Prophet Wasallam, they had a true dream when it came to the uh, the uh, the issue of the Adhan. They, heard, uh, they had dream, the same dreams um, on how to do the Adhan and the wordings for the Adhan and so on and so the companions of the Prophet. So they, the same way Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he had his companions, they maybe had a similar dream, is one way it could have been done. Or they had some sort of inspiration, some sort of, you know, revelation, they had some sort of gush for something. An amin will be that you believe in me, I'll be rasuli, or in my messenger. Qalu amanna washhad bi anna muslimun. We believe and bear witness that we have submitted ourselves. And remember when the, the disciples of Jesus, peace be upon him, they said, Can your Lord, meaning do this for us, does it, it means the ability to do something. They obviously believed in Allah. Here is, would he allow this to happen in that sense? So can your Rabb, Please send down to us a table from the sky. So Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Fear Allah if you're truly believers. 
meaning if this dua is accepted and Allah sends sends down from the sky uh, a a table to you for to eat eat for what reason uh, we'll go that into that in a second. They said, "Qalu nuridu an na'kula minha." We want to eat from it because why? Tat ma'inna qulubuna, so that our hearts will find tranquility. Wa na'lama an qad sadakta wa nakuna alayha min al-shahidin. And so we will know for sure that what you have said is absolutely true, and we will bear witness to this. Now, this eating on the table in the Christian literature is known as the Last Supper. And it is at this Last Supper, which we're going to read about right now. So, then came the day of the unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent, sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Now, po one point here is the Passover is a Jewish uh, day. But why is Jesus celebrating a Jewish day? Because he followed the Jewish law. He was a Jew. And he kept all the commandments. The point of this is that Nowadays, Christians say, oh, you don't have to follow the commandments. But Jesus himself kept the commandments. Then you'll say that St. Paul said that you don't have to follow the, follow the commandments. Okay, he said that, but that's not what Jesus said, and that's not what Jesus did. Jesus followed all the commandments. So, where do you want us to prepare for it, they asked. <clears throat> he replied, as you enter the city, so as you enter the city, when you go inside the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. So a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters. So just follow him into the house that he enters. And say to the owner of the house, the teacher, not God, the teacher asks, where is the guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large upper room on the, you could say on the roof, an upper room, all furnished, make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his companions reclined at the table. He asked them, I have eagerly desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer, meaning before I leave. And then what does he say? For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God is what khilafah. It's the kingship of, of Allah. That this whole earth belongs to Allah and it should be under the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he comes back, he will establish the rule of Allah on earth. And then after that, what will happen? He will also have a supper, a supper again at that time. So this is now, that supper that he's talking about, when I come back, I will not have this bread again. This is now mentioned in Quran in this way. So then he said, "Qala ya, Qala Isa ibn Maryam, Allahumma Rabbana, Allahumma Rabbana." This is very interesting, by the way, because the most of the du'as in Quran are with the word "Rabb." Even Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin has the word "Rabb" in it. Rabbi Zidni Ilma, Rabbana Atina fi Dunya Hasana. Most of the du'as of the Quran are with "Rabb." Then there are some du'as with Allahumma and some of the du'as are with A'udhu Qul A'udhu bi Rabbil Falak A'udhu Billahi an nakuna min al-jahilin like this. But most of them Rabbana in the hadith in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam most of the du'as are Allahumma 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 like this. Allahumma jinnah min al-nar Allahumma and then the Prophet would make a du'a. Here, interesting is, the Qur'an mentions Allahumma and Rabbana together. So, what does uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam say? Allahumma Rabbana anzil alayna ma'idata min as-sama. Allahumma Rabbana. Oh Allah, by all your beautiful names, our, our Rabb, we ask you. Anzalna ma'idata min as-sama, send to us a table from the sky. Takuna lana eidan. So it will be an Eid, a day of Eid for us. For the first of us and the last of us. <coughs> last of us when? When he comes back to the last of us in this world. After he establishes the deen of Allah 
then one day he's going to have a supper with his disciples that will be his disciples at that time and you know uh and 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 he will have uh, that the supper with one of the disciples of his time in the times to come uh, in the future so the awalina the first of us meaning at his time wal akhirina the last of us when he comes back so now these are three uh indications in the same surah that isa alayhi salatu wasalam is coming back first was no one will die. No one of the people of the book will die except they believe in him. Number one. Number two. He will talk to people in his cradle and his old age. And number three. Kunu lana li awalina wal akhirina. So it will be an Eid for the first of us and the last of us. Wa ayatam mink and an ayah for you. Warzukna wa anta khairul raziqin and give us providence. You are the best of those who. Provide providence, and you may also find it find it interesting that there is this parchment that's been found that uh, basically has the words about a wife that Jesus said he said, uh, "My wife, okay, she will be able to be my disciple." So he said he's referring to this in the future tense. So I take it to mean. That you know, Jesus is talking about his future wife when he comes back at that time, he will get married. And Allahu A'lam. So, Qala Isa ibn Maryam, Allahumma Rabbana anzil alayna ma'idata min as sama'i takuna lana a'idan li awalina wal akhirina wa ayatan min mink wa razakna wa anta khayru raziqin. It will be a sign for the first of us and the last of us, and you are the best of those who provide. Qala Allahu. إِنِّي مُنزِلُهَا عَلَيْكُمْ I'm going to, Allah said, I'm going to send that down to you. فَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ مِنْكُمْ So after this, whoever amongst you does kufr, whoever denies this, إِنِّي أُعِيذُهُ I will definitely punish him. عَذَابًا لَا يُعَذِّبُ أَحَدًا مِنْ عَالَمِينَ With such a punishment not given to anyone in the whole of mankind. إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ And remember when Allah says to Isa, Isa ibn Maryam, and Aenta, Allah says to Isa, Aenta kunta lil nas, ittakhidhu ni wa ummi alihayni min dunillah. Oh Isa, you said to the people to take me as, uh, to take me and my mother as God, as gods. قال سبحانك إيسا عليه الصلاة والسلام وصي سبحانك ما يكون لي أن أقول لك ما ليس ما ما ليس لي بحق how can I say something for which I have no right for or say something that's not true إن كل إن كنت قلته فقد علمته if I had said it you know it best if I said it تعلم ما في نفسي ولا أعلم ما في نفسك you know what's in me and I don't know what's in you not in the sense of a place but in a metaphorical sense indeed you're the one who is aware of all the unseen things then isa alayhi continues to say i didn't say anything to them except what you commanded me to say worship allah rabbi wa rabbukum my rabb and your rabb وَكُنْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا And I was a witness over them. مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ As long as I was with them. فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي When you took me, كُنْتُ أَنْتَ رَقِيبٌ You were the one who was watching them. عَلَيْهِمْ You were the watcher over them. وَأَنْتَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٌ And Allah, you are a witness over everything. إِن تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ إِبَادُكُ If Allah, you punish them, they are your servants. وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ And O oh Allah, if you forgive them, فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ You are the one who is all-powerful, all-wise. <coughs> now, why didn't Isa alayhi salatu wasalam say, إِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So, scholars have talked about this in terms of, wouldn't it have been better if he said, إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ But because this is a matter of shirk, 
and because this is something that has caused Allah the most anger, most anger. Because in Quran, you know, when Allah talks about the shirk of the pagans, Allah even mocks it. You know, they you've made these angels as my daughters. You know, kind of like uh, you take for yourself the sons and want to give me daughters this time. But every time, the issue of making Jesus God, a prophet of Allah, God, Subhanahu Ballahu Mafis. You can see the 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 type of response Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gives. Subhanallah. Inna ka antal Azizul Hakim. Now, when Isa Alayhi Salatu Salam was himself being worshipped by these people. He now couldn't go as Ghafoor Rahim. He had to say Azizul Hakim. You're the most powerful and you're the most wise. Your wisdom will know what to do. قَالَ اللَّهُ هَذَا يَوْمَ يَنْفَعُ الصَّادِقِينَ صِدْقِهِمْ And Allah will say, this is the day where the truth of those who, the, the truth of the truth followers or the truthful people will benefit them. لَهُمْ جَنَّاتًا تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ For them will be Gardens under which rivers flow, رضي الله عنهم رضوا أن and Allah will be happy with them and they will be happy with Allah. ذلك الفوز العظيم. اللهم جعلنا منهم. That is the greatest success. You get to Jannah. That's success. That's the real success. Not what car you have, what your house you have, not the things you have, not this illusion of this world, but only real success in this life is the position of Islam in the world, and number two, the real success is. In, in, in correspondence to what I just said, to what will happen to you in the Day of Judgment. Our collective izzah is what happens to Islam in this world. Our individual izzah is with what happens to us in the Day of Judgment. لِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And for Allah is the kingship of the heavens and the earth, وَمَا فِيهِنَّ And whatever is between it, وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And He has the power to do all things. Now we have come to an end to Surah Al-Ma'idah. Now, so you have one Makki Surah, <coughs> Surah Al-Fatiha, and then you have this blueprint of Sharia and Islamic law and discussion with the people of the book. Over here also, I want to point out some of the similarities between these two, because we have discussed a little bit about the similarities between Surah Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran, but Surah Al-Nisa and Surah Al-Ma'idah, they both emphasize highly on justice, 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 justice. Okay, and then, uh, you know, over there was the in laws of inheritance. That's the two-third, because one-third a person can give to who, by his choice where he wants. So the two-thirds of the law of inher inheritance was given in Sutil uh, uh, Nisa. Then the one-third that was left, where you can give the inheritance uh, by your free will, whoever you want, the rules regarding that are given in Sutil Ma'idah. Then, you have a discussion about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, a strong discussion about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam in Sutan Nisa and then also in Sutan Ma'idah. You find Sutan Nisa starts with Ya Yuhannas and then you find Sutan Ma'idah starts with Ya Yuhalladina Amanu Aufu Bil Uqud. Oh, you people believe, complete your, keep your pledges that you make. Okay? So then you find, for example, Sutan Nisa is dealing with uh, more of these social aspects. So the Ma'ida is dealing more with the individual aspects in regards to food and pilgrimage during the uh, the food and all of this. So you you find a lot of similarities between Sutul uh, Sutul Ma'ida and then Sutul uh, Nisa. A lot of similarity between these two. The language of these two is very similar. But now in Sutul An'am, that this is going to be the first, you know. Uh, Surah Al-An'am and then Surah Al-A'raf two long Makki Surahs okay? Surah Al-An'am is going to be more like look at my creation look at this and also the issue here is that uh, they were asking the Prophet for a miracle and they wanted something other than Quran this will become very clear in uh, today's juz as we study this they wanted something other than Quran they were saying why doesn't an angel come down to us and they were asking, you know, why don't we see like miracles from you, O Muhammad, like the previous prophets gave so many miracles. Why aren't you giving miracles like this? So Allah responds to this in His way, which we will discuss, which is very interesting. And so you'll see this discussion starting in Surah Al-An'am, which we will go over today, inshallah ta'ala. 
So without any further uh, ado, let's inshallah continue right away into the subject. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون Now, uh, this surah, let me give you an introduction. Um, one of the things that Allah, they want a miracle from the Prophet وسلم, and they are also raising objections regarding uh, you know, why an angel doesn't come down? Why doesn't, uh, you know, a miracle come in front? Of, let us see the Quran actually coming down in a way where we can touch it and feel it and know that this is being sent down to you. All these objections are being raised. And Surah Al-An'am is answering these and telling the Prophet, there's going to be no miracles. That's it. What we've given, the main miracle is the Quran. Now, there are two types of miracles. Okay, so let me explain this properly so that you can understand this. There is that miracle we call Mu'jza. Mu'jza is a type of miracle that Prophet comes to the to make the claim, I'm a Prophet, let me show you something supernatural. Like Musa والسلام, went with Bayda, he put his hand in between his arms and then he came out with a white shining thing and he had the rod, he threw it and, you know, it became like a snake. So this was on the basis of the claim that I am sent by Allah and let me show you something to prove to you I am sent by Allah. Then there is Kirama. Kirama is a miracle except it doesn't have that claim. It, it's just something that the Prophet happened to do. And he happened to do it not because somebody was saying to him, hey prove to me you're a Prophet and then the Prophet shows him a miracle because of this claim that I'm a prophet, I'm doing this miracle, you have to believe in me. But the prophet happened to, you know, uh, talk to, um, uh, happened to, let's say, for example, hear the uh, tree cry when he stopped giving the khutbah at that location and went to the other location to give the khutbah. And he heard the tree cry and the companions heard the tree cry. This was also a miracle. These types of miracles were done by the prophet, sallallahu perhaps based upon some of the books, you know, I think Imam Nathemiyah has a book on 2,000 miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. If I'm correct, it was him. But a huge amount of miracles are done by the Prophet ﷺ. But they weren't done on the basis of the claim of him being a Prophet. Now, there is one miracle, which is where he split the moon to show the people. But that was not enough for the people of Mecca. They were still raising objections. So now let's get into it with this introduction. Um, also, the other thing that's very important to say is that We've been reading the Madani Quran mostly, which is Ya Yuhaladina Amanu, it's talking about Islamic law, it's talking about you know the Munafiqun, it's talking about the people plotting against Islam, trying to make trying to hurt Islam and the believers, what is expected from them in this struggle and jihad, and this is the blueprint of the Sharia. All of this is in the Madani Quran that we have uh, studied till now. Up till now. We are almost uh, one-fifth of the Qur'an, I think, where we've done, alhamdulillah. Now the Qur'an that we're going to be studying is focusing on Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, the Day of Judgment, Prophethood, and the objections that were there specifically uh, amongst the Quraysh and dialogue with the Quraysh and nor uh, the general universal teachings of morality that, you know, you don't kill your daughter and put her in the ground. You don't do that, right? You don't defraud people, uh, and so on and so forth. So the very general universal truths and the very general universal moral uh, teachings and those teachings are then connected with then you will be asked in the Day of Judgment. Okay, without any further ado, inshallah, let's continue. Alhamdulillah, ladhi khalaq as-samawati wal All praises for Allah, all love, the feeling of love, you can say, Alhamdulillah, is the feeling of love out of recognizing Allah's uh, favors. And it's like shukr, you feel shukr towards Allah. And that shukr uh, reaches to the point of feeling love that that only Allah could have done this for me or Allah, only Allah does this for me. You know, if a construction worker makes a house, you're not concerned with that construction worker. You don't like feel uh, you know, in ecstasy of some sort that I need to thank or I'm so happy of this 
you don't, but Allah is saying, look, I created, Allah wants you to appreciate what he created. Allah wants you to look at what he created, right? And so the Al Imran we read, uh, they look at, they ponder over the heavens and the earth. So they're connected with, to, with what is above them. They're always thinking about what's above them in that sense. Uh, one of the great scholars of Islam, uh, uh, Malik bin Nabi, refers to this idea of looking on Muslims look to upward. And those people that want to conquer the world and conquer the land and dominate the earth in a tyrannical way are always looking downward. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, الذي خلق السماوات والأرض, all gratitude and praise is and thanks is to Allah who created the heavens and the earth, وجعل الظلمات والنور, and He created the many many forms of darknesses, kufr, ilhad, shirk, so on and so forth. ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعذلون, then those people who deny the truth, what do they do? They make, uh, they set up equals to Allah subhanahu wa taala. وَالَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ طِينَ It is Allah who created you out of mud and uh, out of, uh, uh, you could say, out of out of turab, dust and water. When that comes together, it becomes thin. ثُمَّ قَضَى أَجَلَ And then he decreed a term. وَأَجَلَ مُسَمَّنْ عِنْدَهُ And this term is with him. Okay, a recorded ter a term that is with him. ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ تَمْتَرُونَ and then you are now in disagreement about the reality, what is really going to happen with human beings. So you are, you don't, you, it's not like you yourself have some answers to these questions. Quran is answering for you. Uh, Quran is giving you the answers to the perennial questions of, of the of the world, of why you're here and where you're going to go and what is really our fate and what we were created for. It's not like you have any answers for this. It is Allah. Who is in the heavens and the earth? Wherever you look, you can see the demonstration of Allah's power. You can see the demonstration of Allah's beauty and Allah, of Allah's creativity. Okay, Ya Alamu Sirrakum wa Jahrakum, and He knows what you hide and what you say, what you show outward. He knows what's in the hearts of the people of Quraysh, and He knows what they're saying. What's in their hearts is different from what they're saying. What they're saying is what they're saying is just excuses, and what's really in their hearts is they just don't like. <coughs> that they have decided to become stubborn. Yeah, and he knows fully well of the things you've earned. Kasp here in Quran, in almost all the places in Quran, Kasp always refers to the earning of good deeds or bad deeds. They have there has never come to them a sign amongst the signs of Allah except they turn away. This has been the history. You know, signs of Allah come and people turn away, and so they're asking. You know, what would happen? What would happen if the if the with the, all the signs that were given to the people before, those that were going to believe believed, those the, those that were not going to believe didn't believe. فَكَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ So they denied the truth when it came came to them. فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِيهِمْ نَبَأُ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَحْزِئُونَ So the soul will reach to them the true news about which they are in making mocking and making fun of today. They're making fun of the companions, the Prophet. Yet the Ghamazun, they wink at each other when they see the companion. Oh, this is that person. He's with Muhammad. Right? Today they're mocking the believers. You'll see what happens. Alam kam ahlakna min qablihim min qarnin makkarnahum fil ard. Have you not seen of those people before how many nations have been destroyed? And it's so interesting, subhanAllah, today you read about the archaeology of all these ancient civilizations that have been destroyed. One after the other, you read about these. You know, whether it is the pharaohs or the Mayans and the Mesopotamia, the, Indus, the civilization in the Indus Valley or the uh, civilization in Mesopotamia, so and the and civilizations of the, uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the, the ones in Europe, uh, around the Roman Empire at one time. Uh, we gave them authority on earth, the Roman Empire. We gave them a great authority on earth. We gave them so much power, their power than even Quraysh was at that time of the Prophet. They were stronger, but then they came to an end. By the time the Prophet was there, it was the Byzantine Empire on the, Romans, on the uh, European side. وَأَرْسَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا And we sent down from the sky, you know, 
sh uh, showers to uh, showers, okay? وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهِمْ And we gave them res an air itself irrigating system. Everything was there. Showers were coming down. And the irrigation is there. And the trees are there. Everything was being given to you. فَأَحْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ But we destroyed them. Why? Because of their sins. The sins they, you know, the Roman Empire fell. Why? Because of its sins. You can read this in history. بِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَأَنْشَعْنَاهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ قَرْنًا آخَرِينَ After that we started a, a new generation, a new people. And then they rose up, you know, and, and they were given a chance. Now here is the answer to the questions that they're being asking for. They're saying, give us, let us see a book come down so we can touch it with our own hands. So now Allah is responding, لو أنزلنا إليك كتابا في قرطاس لمسوه بأيديهم Okay, and if we sent down to you, O Prophet وسلم, you know, a, a, a written, something written that they can touch with their own hands, قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those people who deny the truth, they will say, إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ They'll say, this is just, you know, magic. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ مَلَكٌ They say, O Prophet, they say to the Prophet, why doesn't an angel come down? Why doesn't an angel come down? That we can, you know, we'll believe in the angel. He should come with the teachings. If an angel come down, the whole affair would finish. Because angels come down to destroy the nations. That's their role in the government of Allah. They come down and they, sh you know, when they come down, they come not to uh, do da'wah. The Prophet does the da'wah. They come at the end to wipe out the nation. Then they're given no chance. On top of that, even if we did send an angel, if an angel would have come down, like many of uh, the angels came down in the in the form that looked like the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, came down in the form of one of the companions, for example, even if he did come down, he would come down in the form of what? A man? And he would wear what clothes? The same clothes you're wearing. Wear some, you know, clothes that you cover. He would cover. He would cover himself the way you cover yourself. So he would be a man, and then you would have the same objection anyway. What I mean, it it doesn't. It, so this is Allah's sunnah. The angels come down. They have their role. The prophets they have their role. Over here, the prophet was hoping that maybe some more miracles, if Allah gives it to them then maybe they'll believe, you know, Allah, the Prophet was hoping for this. And this will become clear as we continue. O Prophet ﷺ, they have made, mocked and made a mockery of the, of the Prophets before. Min qablika, before you. فَحَاكَ بِالَّذِينَ سُخِرُوا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَحْزِئُونَ So what happened is, they got trapped by what? Minhum, they got trapped by bima kanu yastahziyun. The things that they used to make fun of, those are the things that got got them trapped by Allah subhanahu wa taala. So the punishment came, and then what happened? Well, and then uh, and, and then Allah says, "Qul siru fil ard." Go ahead, travel the earth, see the earth, see these civilizations. Thumma nzuru kaifa kana aqibatul mukaddibin. Then see all these civilizations that have been destroyed. What was their result? And why were they destroyed? All these civilizations that we hear today about the civilizations that have passed away. Why they were they destroyed? They were destroyed because they denied the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here's examples of top ten civilizations. This is just, you know, just an example. So civilizations that mysteriously disappeared. You know, and most of these civilizations that just disappeared were, a lot of them were just pagans, idol worshippers. So this makes sense in the context of Qur'an in that sense. Now who is Allah talking to in the Qur'an? These pagan worshippers, right? So these, you know, these Nebatines, for example, the this empire. Uh, so this is just some examples. Civilizations that just went away. So travel the earth. What was the result of the people who denied the truth? Say, O Prophet ﷺ, ask them, who, For who is it that whatever is in the heavens and the earth? Who has the authority over everything in the heavens and the earth? To Allah, it's all Allah. 
you're trying to go to other gods to get close to God. Because this was the concept is that, you know, we, we're not so good. We can't go to God directly. So we go to this idol and this idol is close. Then we go to this God. And since these semi-demigods are like close to the real God. So we go to these. No, you don't need to do this. Allah is merciful. Allah is not going to put a barrier between you and him. You're his favorite creation. This is the Islamic concept. And over here you'll see how much Tawheed is being pounded into us. The oneness of Allah and Allah's mercy and Allah's power and the things Allah has created. <coughs> and we will definitely gather you on the Day of Judgment. There's no doubt about that. And those people who uh, make put themselves at loss. فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ It's because they don't believe. لَهُمْ مَا سَكَنَ فِي اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ And for him is whatever dwells in the daytime or the nighttime. <coughs> or by day or by night. وَهُوَ السَّمِيُونَ عَلِيمٌ And he listens and he is all-knowing. قُلْ O Prophet, say to them, صلى الله عليه وسلم, ask them, أَفَغَيْرُ اللَّهِ اتَّخَذُوا وَلِيًّا Do you take for a protector, for a helper, other than Allah? When he is the one who has originated the heavens and the earth, he's the one who uh, feeds you and he's not the one fed. Ul, O Prophet, say, Say, I'm the one who has been commanded, the first of those commanded to surrender. And not to be of the people that do shirk. This is the certificate given to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And he was not of the people that did shirk. And this is the same thing being told to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam to say that. قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ عَسَيْتُ رَبِّي I fear that I should dis that I disobey Allah. عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ From the punishment of that terrible day. مَنْ يُسْرِفْ عَنْهُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ فَقَدْ رَحِمَ And whoever is saved that day, he has the mercy. وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْضُ الْمُبِينَ And that is clearly the real success. اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ May Allah make us amongst them. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِدُرٍ If Allah comes to you with any dur, any evil, or something you don't like, right? If some difficulty. فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ Then there's no one to remove it إِلَّا هُ Except him. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ بِخَيْرٍ And if something touches you of good, فَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Then he has the power to do all things. هُوَ قَاهِرُ فَوْقَ إِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرِ He is the one who has power over all his servants and he is الْحَكِيمُ The all-wise and all-khabir. He has news of you every moment, at live news of everything you do at any given moment. Then, قُلْ O Prophet ﷺ asked them, أَيُّ شَيْءٍ أَكْبَرُ شَهَادَ Which is the biggest witness? Who is the biggest witness? قُلْ لِلَّهِ Allah is the biggest witness. شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ He is the witness between me and you. وَأُوْهِيَ إِلَيَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ This Qur'an has been sent down to me. And Allah is my witness. This Qur'an has been sent down to me. لِيُنْذِرَكُمْ بِهِ وَمَنْ بَلَغْ To warn you with this Qur'an and whoever it reaches. This was the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Convey the message through Qur'an. Convey my, the message of the Prophet through the Qur'an. Through the books of Allah, through the words of Allah. This was the sunnah of the Prophet. أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَشْهَدُونَ أَنَّ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا أُخْرَى Do you bear witness that with Allah there's another God? قُلْ لَا أَشْهَدْ No, I don't bear, but we bear witness. But I, so the argument here is, I bear witness this Qur'an is sent to me from Allah. But if I ask you, bear witness there's a God with Allah, you don't, we don't accept that testimony. لَا أَشْهَدْ I don't accept. The Prophet was told to say, قُلْ إِنَّمَا هُوَ إِلَهُ وَاحِدْ But he is one Allah. وَإِنَّنِي بَرِيءٌ مِّمَّا تُشْرِكُونَ And I am free from the shirk that you do. Now remember, this is one of the later Makki surahs. So the language here is a little bit tougher than in the initial phases. Now here again, referring back to the people of the book, 
Prophet Muhammad is not coming with something new, but rather he's coming with something that the people of the book were expecting. They were already expecting a prophet. And he and he is mentioned in their books. So Allah says, Alladina Ataina Humul Kitab, those people that were given the book. Now chronologically these verses came before the verses that we've been studying, right? So Alladina Ataina Humul Kitaba Yarifunahu, Kama Yarifuna Abnahum, those people we gave the book, they know him, meaning his signs, his attributes, and so on and so forth. كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاهُمْ Like they know their own sons. الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ So this is the second time this phrase comes. Those people who, you know, lose themselves, they lose themselves, they, they go astray, you can say, and then and they, they don't believe. فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ أَوْ كَذَّبَ بِآيَاتِ who can be more of a wrongdoing person than the one who makes a lie against Allah? Or he, he makes a lie out of the signs of Allah. إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِهُ الظَّالِمُونَ For he, Allah will not give success to the wrongdoers. Allah will not give success to the wrongdoers. They had the Qur'an to deal with. They weren't able to match the Qur'an in any way. And this was really bothering them. And this point will come. يَوْمَ نَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا The day we will gather them all together. ثُمَّ نَقُولُ لِلَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَيْنَ شُرَكَاءُكُمْ We will gather you on the day of judgment and we'll ask you where is those things that you associated as partners to me. الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ تَزْعُمُونَ Those things that you trusted so much that you know used to have such you know uh, you could say uh, faith in, in them. Where are they today? On the day of judgment Allah will ask. ثُمَّ لَمْ تَكُنْ فِتْنَتُهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا وَاللَّهِ رَبُّنَا مَا كُنَّا مُشْرِكِينَ Then on the Day of Judgment you'll say, you know when you'll be investigated, you'll say, oh no, 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 we didn't, we didn't do shirk, you'll be lying like this, right? أُنْزُرْ كَيْفَ كَذَّبُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْفُسِهِمْ See how they lie upon themselves, like they've deceived themselves. وَظَلَّ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ And then they have now become astray. Because of the things that they invented. You know, all these idols and everything are just things that they invented out of thin air. Giving the name of the idol, making the idol, all just invented. And amongst them there are those who listen to you, O Prophet And we have put like kind of like a a covering so that they don't understand. Because they're they're not meant to understand this message. Because their intentions are bad. And it's as if, you know, their, their ears are deaf. They hear, but they're not able to understand. Their, their ears are like soulless, you could say. They don't have, they don't see the reality of the things or hear the, into the reality of things. If they saw every ayah, because the Prophet, like I said, he wanted to show them more miracles, but Allah had decided no. If you show them all the miracles, they would still say, they will still not believe. Hatta idha ja'uka yujadilunaka. They will come to you and argue with you. Yaqulu alladhina kafaru in hadha illa asatiru al They'll say, oh, no, 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 no. These are just, you know, the fables of the people before, stories of the people before us. We just read today that when Jesus came with all the miracles, they said, oh, he's a magician, right? They said he's a magi magician. So here they were calling the Prophet what? When he came with the miracle of Quran, he's a, in, sahirun, sahirun kaza, he's a magician, they said to the Prophet. He's majnoon, he's gone crazy, he's a magician. So they were trying to, you know, these are the types of things. that. And then when they hear the news in the Quran, they say, the information in the Quran, in has illa asatirul awwali. This is the stories of the ancient people, this is not really real. Hum yanhawna anhu wa yanhawna anhu. You know, they keep others away from the Prophet and themselves are try to stay away from the Prophet, lest the ayat of Qur'an reach them. They, they, don't, they, don't, uh, they don't destroy except themselves, but they don't re realize it. They're the ones that are destroying themselves in, in, in this life because the Sunnah of Allah is if you don't obey the Prophet, if you do not surrender to the Prophet of your time, then your, your nation is destroyed. This is the Sunnah of Allah. And this is what Makkah will be told. That if you don't believe in the Prophet, you're going to be eventually, there will come a time that Allah will say, that's it, you'll be destroyed. What happened in the case of the Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that his companions believed in him.
لو ترى إذ وقفوا على النار. If you were to only see them when they're standing on top of the fire, when they're over the fire, فقالوا يا ليتنا. They will say, oh, whoa, what a shame for us. What a, you know, what a uh, humiliation for us, you could say. Uh, oh, only that what? نرد ولا نكذب بآيات ربنا. On that day, you will say, when you will be on the fire, you'll say, only if we can go back, then we won't deny the ayat of Allah. We'll believe in the ayat of Allah. ونكون من المؤمنين. And we will be of those who believe. بل بدا لهم ما كانوا يخفون من قبل. Even if they were, so Allah says, so if, now if they are returned back, and then they would have to be returned back in such a way that the unseen would still be unseen, and they wouldn't have seen the hellfire, they wouldn't have seen, because that was the whole purpose. So that's the point here. بَلْ بَدَا لَهُمْ What has become manifest for them, meaning the day of judgment, the hellfire, and so on and so forth. مَا كَانُوا يُخْفَوْنَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Before this, before this it was hidden. So even if you were returned back, you would be back in that same state that you are in today. And then what would happen? You would act as you just acted. Right? لَوْ يَرُدُّ عَادُوا لِمَا نَهُوا عَنْهُ This is why if you return back, you would return back to the same things that you were doing anyway. إِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ They are liars. وَقَالُوا إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا Now they didn't uh, believe in the hereafter, the people of Mecca. So now this is one of the things that really struck them. Because they believed in Allah, but they didn't believe in the hereafter at all. So, وَقَالُوا إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا They say, this is just our life of this world. وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَبْعُوثِينَ We're not going to be raised on the Day of Judgment. لَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى رَبِّهِمْ Just imagine that scene that they will be before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will say to them, قَالَ أَلَيْسَ هَذَا بِالْحَقِّ This this you're experiencing now, you're in front of me, is this the truth? قَالُوا بَلَا They'll say yes. رَبَّنَا قَالُوا بَلَا وَرَبَّنَا Yes, it's true, by 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 our Rabb, by, by, we swear by you, Allah, this is true. قَالَ فَذُوقُوا الْعَذَابِ So we say, okay, now taste the punishment. بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ For the kufr that you did, for the denying of the truth that you did. Then here again you will see the basics are being repeated. قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِلِقَائِ And then what already are destroyed, the ones who, did, who deny the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ سَعَةٌ بَغْيَةً Until the hour finally comes to them. All of a sudden, قَالُوا يَا حَسْرَتَنَا عَلَى مَا فَرَّتْنَا فِيهَا They'll say, woe to us, what a shame for us, you can say. عَلَى مَا فَرَّتْنَا For whatever we left, you know, whatever we left from it. Meaning of the, they had the chance but they didn't take it. وَهُمْ يَحْمِلُونَ أَوْزَارَهُمْ And they will be carrying their sins. عَلَى ظُهُورِهِمْ On their backs. عَلَى سَاءَ مَا يَزِرُونَ And oh, what a bad thing that they'll be carrying. They'll have a load and they won't be able to make it across the, when before that wall comes down from which you enter, you're in the rahmah of Allah. And if you're, you know, if you're, if you're outside it, then the, then the punishment of Allah comes. That will be mentioned in Sutul Hadid when we come there. مَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ This world is not but play, entertainment. And lahu, entertainment you could say. وَالدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ خَيْرُ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْنَ And the place of the hereafter is better for the people that have taqwa. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Do you not understand? Do you not think? قَدْ نَعْلَمُ Now this is about the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet is being told that, you know, what is happening to you happened before and the also the response to you'll see this you know the prophet sadness is mentioned about i think 200 places in the quran this is one of them we already know o prophet these people make you sad those of them that say uh, for 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 what it's not that they're denying you, O Prophet of Allah. This is not, their problem is not you. But the ظالمون, they, they have a problem with the Qur'an, the ayat of Allah. This is their problem. Look, Prophets were denied before. In, 
kuddibu. They had sabr over what people were making fun of them and mocking at them. Wadhuqu, and they were tasted. Wa'udhu, uh, sorry. And they were given pain. Hatta hatta atahum nasruna. Until our, our, our help came to them. La mubaddila li kalimatillah. There's no changing the words of Allah. The law of Allah is the law of Allah. And the law of Allah is, I send a messenger, you have time to believe. If you believe, you go to Jannah. If you don't believe, you go to the hellfire. You have a time. And then when the, if you believe, you know, there's some uh, things will follow. And if you don't believe in this dunya, you're going to be finished. Right? La mubaddila li kalimatillah. Now, Mecca, the people of Mecca are in a situation, either they're going to believe in the Prophet or they'll be destroyed. And now has come to you from the news and information of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is difficult for you, a Prophet of Allah, now this is probably the harshest statement to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Quran, Allahu Alam. In, because the Prophet wanted to show them miracles, so this is the response of Allah. In kana kabura alayka, if it's you know, if you don't like what Allah has decided not to give them miracles, in kabura alayka, aradhuhum, you know, if that they're not paying attention to you, a Prophet, because they're asking for these things and it's not being given to them. Fa in istata'ata, if you can. Go ahead, put a tunnel into the earth, inside the earth, put a tunnel inside the earth. Or put a ladder or a staircase to go into the sky. Then go ahead and show them the miracle you want to show them the ayah. Show them what they want. Meaning, obviously, Allah is saying that I'm not giving it. If you want to do it, you do it yourself. Meaning, it's not going to happen. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَهُمْ عَلَى هُدَىٰ If Allah wanted, He would have put them all on the same track. All of them on guidance. فَلَا تَكُونَنَّا مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And don't be of those people that are uh, jahil, er, ignorant. إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ Only those people will answer you who are, who are able to actually listen. وَالْمَوْتَ يَبْعَثَهُمُ اللَّهُ as for the dead, Allah will raise him on the Day of Judgment. ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُونَ And then they will return to him. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةً مِنْ رَبِّهِ And they say, قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَادِرٌ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُنَزِّلَ آيَةٍ Allah can send down a sign for it to show them. وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Most of them don't know this, but Allah can do this. They say, why has Allah not sent down a sign or a miracle for us to see? Because the point was, now that miracles has come to an end, he's the last prophet, he's going to do everything based upon hard work, there's no manna and salwa, there's no like parting the seas for you, it's not going to be that easy anymore, this ha this has to, this is the last messenger, he has to set the role model, he has to do, make changes in society the hard way, and the only miracle that will be given to you is now the Quran, that's the main miracle, okay? There are other miracles, but that's the main miracle. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ And there's no uh, walking creature on the earth. وَلَا طَائِرَةٌ يُطِيرُ بِجَنَاهَيْهِ Nor any bird that flies on its wing. إِلَّا أُمُمْ أَمْثَالُكُمْ Except they're like in nations like you, a community like you. مَا فَطَرْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ We have not left anything out in the book. ثُمَّ إِلَى رَبِّهِمْ يُحْشَرُونَ And then they will be all gathered. In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people who deny the truth of our signs, they're deaf and blind. Or fi dhulumat. As if they're all in dark, they're dark in darkness, they can't see the truth. Whoever Allah wants, He puts him in darkness. And whoever Allah wants, Allah puts him on the straight path. The other meaning of this ayah is, and whoever wants and desires to be led astray, he's led astray. And whoever wants and is sincere to want guidance, he's on sirat. He's put on sirat al-mustaqim. 
قل أرأيتم إن آتاكم أذاب من الله أو آتاكم سعة غير لله تدعون إن كنتم صادقين Do you think, say have you, you know, thought, you know, if there came to you in, uh, in آتاكم أذاب أذاب الله If a punishment of Allah comes to you, right, and there comes to you the hour, the final day of judgment غَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَدْعُونَ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقُ Would you be praying to anyone other than Allah? At that moment, at that moment of difficulty, like Allah mentions about the people in the boat, right, even though they believe in other gods, but when the boat is about to sink, at that time human nature demands that you talk to God, and that human nature knows that one God as that one true God. And so this is what's being referred to. See, any time you're in that difficult, difficult state where you're about to just sink, and you're about to drown, or you're in some difficulty, and you just call out to God inside yourself, right? In deep in your heart, you're calling out to God, and Allah sees this. So Allah is referring to that. But إِيَّاهُ تَدْعُونَ فَيَكْشِفُ مَا تَدْعُونَ إِلَيْهِ And then, at that time, you're going to call on to that one true Allah, right? فَيَكْشِفُ مَا تَدْعُونَ إِلَيْهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove that for which you called on Him. in شَأَ If He wills. وَنَسُونَ مَا تُشْرِكُونَ And then, you will forget, right, about the uh, shirk that you were doing. You will forget about it. And you'll make partners to Allah. You you know, you, many times in life something happens, you call in Allah, Allah does it, and then you go back to your same ways. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ Indeed, O Prophet وسلم, we've already sent to, uh, sent you know, pro messengers, right? Or prophets of Allah. وَلَقَلْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّنْ قَبْلِ We've been sending prophets to nations before. فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَعْسَاءِ وَالْدَرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَدَرَّعُونَ Right? So we caused them, you know, to uh, to to suffer uh, difficulty and harm. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَدَرَّعُونَ So that maybe they'll humble, you know, a nation goes through difficulties, maybe you'll become humble. فَلَوْلَا إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ بَعْسُنَا تَدَرَّعُوا وَلَكِنْ قَصَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزُيِّنَ لَهُمْ هُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Then why is it that when our punishment would come to them, they would not make themselves humble? فَلَوْلَا إِذَا جَاءَهُمْ بَعْسُنَا so why is it not that when our punishment came to them, difficulty comes to a nation, uh, that you become humble. لكن قصد قلوبكم قلوبهم But their hearts became hard. وزين لهم لهم الشيطان ما كانوا يعملون And shaitan made them, made what they were doing beautiful in their eyes. Giving them false promises and false hopes and umni له, you know, uh, just this, uh, this hope, amal. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ So prophets come, they try to remind, people don't want to remember, they don't want to take into consideration. So what it happens? فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرَ بِهِ فَتَحْنَ عَلَيْهِمْ بَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ We open the doors of everything for them. All the good things that they think are good coming to them. حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِهُوا بِهَا Then when they become overly proud and happy and rejoicing over this, right, بِمَا أُوتُوا By what I have given them. When they're in that state, then what happened? أَخَذَتْهُمْ بَغْتَةً Then something takes them all of a sudden. وَهُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ And they're left with no hope at all at that time. وَقُطِيَ دَابِرُ الْقَوْمِ And this is how we cut out the, uh, eliminate the people. الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا Those people who have done wrong. And what does Allah say about Himself for doing this? For cutting off nations that have done wrong. By sending messengers and if they reject the messenger, how Allah cuts these nations, right? It destroys these nations, Allah says, وَالْحَمْدُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And all praise and gratitude is for Allah, the Rabbul Alameen. He's the one who created these, these civilizations and He brings it down to its knees, into ashes, into nothing. Because He's the Rabbul Alameen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ سَمْعَكُمْ وَأَبْصَارَكُمْ وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ Meaning they didn't deny Allah, but Allah says, if I was to take away your hearing and your sight, right, and put a seal on your hearts, okay, 
then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, Man ilahun ghayru Allah yatikum. Who will, who other, who God? <coughs> if Allah, meaning you don't want to worship Allah, but do you agree that if Allah himself, the master of the universe, decides to take your sight, then is there a, any other God that can take it back from him and give it to you? No. Meaning you believe in these smaller demigods, right? But there, you still believe also that they're nothing in comparison to the real true God. So from that perspective. Allahu ya'tikum bihi unzur kayfa nusarriful ayati thumma hum yasdifun. Look, kayfa nusarriful ayat. See how we are trying to give you the message in so many different ways. Right? How we are trying to bring you to see the truth in so many different ways. Thumma hum yasdifun. But then they just all turn away. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ آتَاكُمْ عَذَابُ اللَّهِ بَغْتَةً أَوْ جَحْرَةً هَلْ يُحْلِكَ إِلَّا قَوْمَ الظَّالِمُونَ Say, O Prophet, ask them, أَرَأَيْتُمْ, do you think, right, إِنْ آتَاكُمْ عَذَابُ, عذاب, عذاب اللَّهِ If the punishment of Allah comes بَغْتَةً all of a sudden, أَوْ جَحْرًا Or, you know, uh, very openly in your face, the punishment comes, هَلْ يُحْلِكَ إِلَّا قَوْمَ الظَّالِمِ Do you think Allah would destroy anyone except for the wrongdoing people? وَمَا نُرْسِلِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزِلِينَ We don't send any prophet, any messenger, except he gives good tidings and bad news. Good tidings on how to get Allah's pleasure. Good tidings on how to get Jannah. And bad news on how to, on staying away from Allah's anger and staying away from the hellfire. فَمَنْ آمَنَ وَأَصْلَحَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ Whoever believes and makes things right, فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ There's no harm, uh, uh, fear for them. وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ And there's no sadness for them. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا And as for those people who lie, كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا And as for those who make a lie of our signs, وَيَسَمُّهُمُ الْعَذَابِ يُمَسَّهُمُ الْعَذَابِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسِقُونَ and then the punishment of Allah will touch them because of the evil that they did. O Prophet ﷺ, say to them, I don't say to you that I have the treasures of the of, of, of Allah. I don't have them. Nor do I know the unseen. Nor do I say I'm an angel. I only follow that which has been sent down to me. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي أَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ O Prophet ﷺ asked them, Does the one who see and not see, are they equal? Are these different types of people equal? A person who has spiritual insight and a person who... Because it's not talking about... You know, Abu Jahal could see, but he had no spiritual insight. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي أَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ Are the one who is able to see and not see the same? أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ Do you not ponder? Do you not think? أنظر به الذين يخافون أن يحشر أن يحشروا إلى ربهم. And as for your disciples, your companions, صلى الله عليه وسلم, أنظر أنظر به الذين يخافون أن يحشروا إلى إلى ربهم. Warn warn those people with this, with this Quran, with this Quran. Quran was the da'wah tool of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. يخافون أن يحشر إلى ربهم that they will be gathered before their Lord, their Rabb. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا شَفِيعٍ There is no protector and nor any intercessor. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ So that they may become of the people who have taqwa. So, so this is the Prophet's job. If they uh, fear that they're going to be brought before Allah, then this reminder can work for them. It will help them. And لَيْسَ لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ There's not for them anyone to protect them. Or, or to allow intercession in this case. Uh, so that they have taqwa of Allah even more. And Allah continues to describe the believers. Don't, O oh Prophet ﷺ, don't turn away those people who call upon their Rabb. You know, in the mornings, in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the night, you could say. You or uh, in even the afternoon, يريدون وجهه 
seeking his face, seeking his pleasure, seeking Allah's happiness. Ma'alaika min hisabihim. On you is not to take account of them, min shay of anything. Wa ma hisabaka alayhim. Nor are they going to take an account of you. You're not going to take an account of them, right? Min shay'in. If you turn them away, those people who actually want to be purified, then you will be of the wrongdoers, right? وَكَذَلِكَ فَتَنَّا بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضِ لِيَقُولُوا أَهَاؤُلَاءِ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ بَيْنِنَا So this is how Allah made a fitna for them. كَذَلِكَ فَتَنَّا بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضِ This is how we made a fitna for some over the others. لِيَقُولُوا So that they say. So now, you know, they see the companions of the Prophet and they're like, oh, look at these people. These are the ones that Allah chose for him. This is Bilal. You know, Khabab bin Arth, these slaves, these are the ones that are with Prophet Muhammad. Aha'ula'i manna Allahu alayhi. These are the ones Allah favored over all of us. Alaysa Allahu a'labu bi shakirin. But do you not think Allah knows who is most grateful amongst them? Wa idha ja'uka alladhina yu'minuna bi ayatina fakul salamun alaykum. Wa idha ja'uka alladhina yu'minuna بِآيَاتِنَا And when they come to you, those who believe in our signs, قُلْ فَقُلْ O Prophet, say to them what? سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ This is what the Prophet was taught and how to greet the companions of the Prophet. كَتَبَ اللَّهُ كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِي رَحْمَةً And Allah has, written, has mandated that He writes upon Himself رَحْمَةً And one of the ways to spread رَحْمَةً and mercy is by saying سَلَامٌ فَفْشَهُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ The Prophet says, spread salams between you. When, you know, we, we are coming into a time where we don't say salams to each other, just say hi and hello, but rather than giving dua. And remember here, Salamun alaykum katab Allahu ala nafsi rahmah. Allah is saying if you say salams upon them or upon others, Allah brings His mercy with that. Innahu man amila minkum su'an, whoever amongst you does something wrong, bi jahalatin, in, in, in air ignorance, he didn't know about Islam, he didn't know the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bi jahalatin thumma, تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ But after that, if he does tawbah wa aslaha and he makes things right for himself, فَإِنَّهُ غَفُورُ رَحِيمُ Indeed, he's all forgiving and all merciful. وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is how we make clear to, نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ We make things clear and in detail. Okay? And and then Allah says, لِتَبْلِ تَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ And becomes clear the way of the wrongdoing people. قُلْ إِنِّي نُهِيتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدُ الَّذِي تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Over here the point is that those companions, the Prophet, even if they did something wrong, then they did tawbah and they did islah. Versus these people who are not listening to the Prophet, they're just bent upon being stubborn and not accepting the truth or not even, even giving it a, a thought. قُلْ إِنِّي نُهِيتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدُ الَّذِي تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Look, I have been commanded that from calling upon... So I I cannot worship the ones that you call other than other than Allah, meaning I can only worship Allah. قُلْ O Prophet, say صلى الله عليه وسلم لَا أَتَّبِعُ أَحْوَاءَكُمْ I am not going to follow your desires. قَدْ ذَلَلْتُ إِذَنْ If that was the case, I would have gone astray. وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْأَحْوَاءَكُمْ Muhtadin and I would not be of those people that are guided if I followed you. Qul inni ala bayinatin min Rabbi wa kadzabtum bih. Look, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, inni ala bayinatin min Rabbi. I'm on a clear path with a clear, you know, teachings with from my Rabb. Wa kadzabtum bih and you have denied this. Wa ma indi ma tasta'ajiluna bih. What this is referring to is the, they were saying, oh, you know, because the Prophet, if you don't believe in the Prophet, what happens to the city of Mecca? It gets destroyed. There's like, okay, then bring up, bring this punishment that you're talking about. Hurry it up. So over here, this is being mentioned, right? قُلْ إِنِّي عَلَىٰ بَيِّنَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّي وَكَذَّبْتُمْ بِهِ I'm on the clear path from my Rabb and you have denied it. وَمَا إِنْدِي مَا تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ بِهِ I don't have what you want in a hurry, what you're asking for. Oh yeah, yeah, just bring that punishment. You know, this type of attitude. I don't have that. In al hukmu illa lillah, the command is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You qasul haq, you qasisul haq, then Allah relates to you things in truth. Wa huwa khayrul fasilin. And He is the one who is the best of deciders when something and what will be done. So either the believers gain victory, or if the believers are, don't get victory, then the others get annihilated.
Meaning, believers give victory means the people of Makkah and everybody accepts Islam. Either they give in to Islam or they'll be destroyed. If I had that which you want in a hurry, that Makkah should be destroyed. If you remember what happened to the Prophet ﷺ when he went to Ta'if, what did the angel say? I'll just crush them between the two mountains. Because that's what happens when you deny a Prophet, then they can be destroyed. Okay? And if I had the, that which you want, desire this punishment to come so quickly, it would have been decided. If it was up to me, I would have already decided. In fact, uh, we'll come to that verse when we go to that uh, that part of the Quran. We can refer back to this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the wrongdoers fully. Allah knows the things of the unseen. No one knows them except Him. And He knows what's in the land and what's in the sea. And no leaf on a tree falls except he know He's aware of it falling down. Imagine, you know, you see, you walk on the street and you see leaves on the ground. Allah knows about each and every one of those leaves. Allah knows about each and every leaf on the tree. Because very soon they'll all be falling down. And Allah knows about each and every one of those. Right? So, وَمَا تَسْكِتُ مِنَ الْوَرَقَ And what will, what falls down from each, about, from each leaf, إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا Except Allah knows it. وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ Okay, nor there is any seed or or grain except in the darkness of the earth, right? Wala ratab, nor something wet or moist. Wala wala yabis, nor something dry. Illa fi kitabim mubin, except in it's in a clear book already written, with a, meaning in the knowledge of Allah. And this is the proof that the word kitab is sometimes used for the knowledge of Allah. This also issue may come up in um, Surah Al Hadid when we go there. Meaning, except it's in a written book, meaning not actually that it's written in a book, except it's in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the other meaning of this. And Allah is the one who takes you during your sleep. And whatever you did during the day. Uh, and then he gives you, he returns you back to life every night when you wake up. In, you know, every morning when you wake up, he returns you back to life. To a, in, uh, an appointed musamma, a appointed time written down. Okay. And then you're going to go back to your Rabb and Allah will tell you of the things that you used to do. Again, Tawheed, 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 Tawheed. He is Al-Qahir. He is the most powerful. Fawqa Ibadihi over his servants. يُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَزَ And he sends over you protection, meaning the angels. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ And those angels are always protecting you until the time of your death. فَتَوَفَّاهُ رُسُلَنَا and then the angels are Rusul, they're messengers, that are angels, they give us they give you your death. Wala yuf and then there will then what? And they're not gonna fail in the job that they do. They're not they're gonna take your soul. When they take your soul, they're taking taking your soul. That's it. Thummat Raddu ila ilallahi maulahum and then they will be returned back to Allah who is who is their Mawla, their protector, their guardian, sustainer, Al Haq. La ilaha illahu al-hukmu wa huwa sariyul hasibin Asra'ul hasibin Thumma turuddu ila Allahi mawlahum They'll be returned back to Allah, their their guardian, al-haq, the true one Ala lahu al-hukm Look, the commandments are from Allah They are Allah, Allah, everything happens by the will of Allah Wa huwa asra'ul hasibin And he's the fastest to be taken account now this is referring to the same thing that was being mentioned er earlier. That who would you call if such and such situation happened? 
because it's in human nature, right? Uh, I was, rem uh, I remember I met this brother who was in Iraq in the U.S. Army, and he was talking about how he he knew even atheists that when they were dying they were calling on God at that because at that moment of suffering, the moment of need. It's just there inside us that we believe in oneness of Allah. We believe in God. And when you think of that one God at that moment when you're calling out and when you're crying to Allah and you're in difficulty, you're not thinking of some idol or some statue or like some cross. You're just thinking of God. قُلْ أَوْ Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say them من من you need you نجيكم في ظلمات البر والبحر who saves you from the darknesses of the sea and the and the land and the sea تدعونه تضرع وخفية you call upon him with اضطراب like like with humbleness وخفية and in privately لا إن جن نجينا and you say to yourself in yourself you say to Allah in yourself to yourself you say to Allah إن نجينا Allah if you save us من هذه from this, Oh Allah, we'll be so thankful if you just save us from this ship sinking. And then Allah saves you. And then you go back to doing what you used to do. Say, it is Allah who saves you from this. And from every difficulty. But what do you do? You still do shirk. قُلْ هُوَ الْقَاهِرُ وَأَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ أَوْ مِنْ تَحْتِكُمْ أَرْجُلِكُمْ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلِكُمْ أَوْ يَلْبِسُكُمْ شِيعًا وَيُذِيكُ بَعْدَكُمْ بَعْسَ بَعْدِ So Allah says, see, say, O Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, هو قاهر على أن يبعث عليكم أذاب أذابا من فوقكم. Allah is fully capable of sending a punishment to you from the top وَمِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلِكُمْ or from the bottom of your feet أو يلبس يلبسكم شيعا or make you into different groups fighting one another يذيك بعضكم بعض سبعد so that you taste the you know the 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 hurt from one another أنظر كيف نصرف الآيات see how we show you different examples our signs we're giving trying to get it show you the Show you the way with our ayat, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّهُونَ That maybe perhaps you will reflect. وَكَذَّبَ بِهِ قَوْمُهُ And then what has happened? But your people have denied you, have denied you O Prophet so They've denied the truth. قُلْ لَسْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ بِوَكِيلُ O Prophet, tell them, I am not a, I'm not responsible. I'm not a caretaker over you. I'm not a wakil over you. I'm not your advocate. لكل نبا مستقر. For every نبا, for every event, there is a مستقر, a time when it occurs, when when it happens. فسوف تعلمون, and soon you will come to, uh, you will soon come to know. إذا رأيت الذين يخضون في آياتنا فعرض عنهم حتى يخضوا في حديث غيري. Now this ayah is very important regarding uh, issues that happen in our times. Which is when the media says something about the Prophet and uh, the media is hurting us. So this this was also occurring in the time of the Prophet. So what did the Prophet was told something? Very interesting because the Sahaba are in Mecca and they're being tortured and they have to hear Adan Kathira and you'll have to hear from them a lot of painful things. So what? When you see those people who engage in being offensive to our signs, our ayat, فَأَرِضْ anhum, Just turn away from them. Turn off the TV. Turn off the radio. Don't, don't need to hurt yourself. They're just doing what they're going to do. Turn it off. If you want to do something, do something positive. Rather than being angry and having rage, do something that is productive, that will use that as an opportunity to, to bring people to closer to Islam. فَأَرِضْ anhum. Stay away from them. Turn it off. Don't listen to it if it hurts you. Until they go into another different conversation. Then when the channel stops talking about it or the whatever it is, they stop making fun of Islam, then then you can go back to it. And if shaitan makes you forget, now that you've been reminded, Right? Don't just stay sitting there. At least show some sort of protest that you're not okay with this. Just don't say sit sitting there. But 
do something positive and at least uh, don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to become so emotional and do something or say something you know that uh, could be hurtful to others فَلَا تَقْعُدْ بَعْدَ الذِّكْرَى Don't, after this reminder, don't sit with them مَعَ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ By the people that are unjust and unfair and are wrongdoers. وَمَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ مِنْ حِسَابِهِمْ It is not on the people who have taqwa to have their, to take their hisab, to take their account. مِنْ شَيْءٍ of anything. وَلَكِنَ الذِّكْرَى لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ But this is just a reminder so that they will have taqwa. Okay, so our job is just to remind and if they want to have taqwa and, and, and have uh, and benefit, then they can. Whether al ladina takhadu dinahum la'iba wa lahwa. Leave alone. Drop those people that have taken their deen as la'ib al lahav. Who have taken their deen as their, their Islam, their religion, whatever, whatever it is, uh, as as la'ib and lahab, as a play and entertainment. A'rid anhum wa gharrat humul hayatu dunya. They've been destroyed by the life of this world. Wa wa bi. So again here, I think the third or the fourth time now, and remind them with this Quran. Wa dhakir bi. Just keep reminding with this Quran. This Quran is like a magnet. You know that magnet uh, where they have wood and then the iron filings, and you put the magnet there, and the iron filings go up. This Qur'an is that magnet that when you teach with this Qur'an, you preach with this Qur'an, it'll bring the right type of people to you. It'll, it'll attract the teachings of the Qur'an and the Qur'an itself when they read it, when they hear it, when they understand it. It'll attract the people who have good fitra, good na nature, automatically to it. And the people that have evil nature will be, will like, it, it will not be attracted. In fact, they'll repulse away from it. وَتَبْسِلَ نَفْسٌ بِمَا كَسَبَ and that soul that has been destroyed for it has earned لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا شَفِيعٌ It has no helper, no wali other than Allah, no shafi other than Allah, no inter... وَإِن تَعْدِلْ كُلَّ عَدْلٍ لَا يُؤْخَذْ مِنْهَا And if it would give every type of thing to ransom itself, it would not be taken from that soul. أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ أُبْلِسُوا بِمَا كَسَبُوا These people are, have no hope because of what they've earned. They're غَرَّتْ هُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا They're lost in the dunya. Right? They don't even, they're like animals. They don't even see that there's a reality, that this is life, that there is morality, and that there's another life after this life. See, this life, this next life and morality are interconnected. You cannot have morality if you don't have the next life. If there's no right and, if there's no next life, there's no right and wrong. And if there's no right and wrong, there's no hereafter. Right? Uh, I mean, so if you, the more غرهم, the more a person believes there's the next life, the more he's going to care about morality. لَهُمْ شِرَابُ مِنْ حَمِيمٌ They will have boiling water to drink. وَعَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And a very painful punishment. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ For the evil, that uh, for, the, for the denying the truth. قُلْ أَأَدُّوا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَنْفَعُنَا وَلَا يُدُرُّنَا now these people, they were worshipping idols. So, O Prophet asked them, Do you call me to worship on something that can not benefit me? لا ينفعنا ولا يضرنا Nor can cause any evil to me. They can't even take a, a fly off of themselves, these idols. But it's not just referring to idols. Anything! Right? If you really believed that no one can benefit you, no one can harm you other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَحَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمِ then you are a free man. Then you are the really free person. So in the case of the Prophet, in, in the time of its revelation, is specifically referring to the idols. That, You want me to call on other than Allah these things that don't benefit me and don't harm me? And you want me to turn my back on my heels? Meaning turn away from the guidance? After Allah has guided me, that would be like That would be like the you know just imagine that that all of a sudden you find yourself picked up by shaitan and dropped on earth somewhere in the jungle somewhere in the desert and you don't know where to go you're like in the middle of the desert or in the middle of the jungle and 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 this would happen you would allow that this would happen while what is happening. 
ويدعونه إلى الهدى ويد وله سحاب سحاب يدعوه يدعونه إلى الهدى آتنا. While he has companions who are pushing him to guidance, come to us for guidance. Right? Why would so the Prophet is told that uh, that tell them that why would I worship other than Allah this? After Allah has given us guidance, that would be like this person who is in the middle of the desert doesn't know where anywhere to go, and 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 he has people calling him to the truth. Anyway, this is the benefit of being with the righteous people because anytime anyone can get into pressure in life to do something wrong, if he's around the right people, then you know he they will keep him strong because the times we're living in, the pressures of society are such that it's not very hard to go into the wrong direction. But if you have the right people around you, they can pull you in, pull you back in, and protect you from shaitan and jinn. قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى Say the guidance is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأُمِرْتُ لِأَسْلَمَ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And I have been commanded to surrender to Rabbul الْعَالَمِينَ وَأَنْ أَقِيمِ الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّقُوهُ And establish the prayer and, and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala هُوَ الَّذِي إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ It is Him that you have to return back to. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ He is the one who has created the heavens and the earth in just, in just cause. وَيَوْمَ يَقُولُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ And that day when he says be and it is. قَوْلُهُ الْحَقِّ His statement is true. It's going to happen. لَهُ مُلْكْ يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي السُّورِ He will be the king on the day when the trumpet is blown. Right? He will be مَالِكُ الْمُلْكِ And he will declare himself that day. You know, that I am the Malik al -Muk. Where are the kings of the world? Where are those that claim themselves to be gods? It's Today is only Allah and all his living creation will be dead. Alimul Ghaybi wa Shahada, he's the one who knows of all things that are unseen and seen. Wa huwa al Hakimul Khabir, and he has all wisdom and all uh, real time news, all information. Now this is the state. This is the uh, argument with uh, with uh, about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. If we can just move over here for a second, Al-An'am. So it talks about the mercy of Allah. Katab Allahu ala nafsi rahma. Allah is written. The pagans, right? Though that they believe in, they confess their guilt. They believe in one Allah, right? Those who deny meeting God, the reward of those who believe, judgment. Now Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam's argument, okay, is going to happen now. إذ قال إبراهيم لبنيه آزرا أتتخذ أسناما آلها. When Ibrahim, remember when Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام said to his father آزرا أتتخذ أسناما آلها. Do you take idols as God? Today we don't believe in idols as gods, but we believe in the flags of the nations, the tribalism, the nationalism as gods. You know the flags are the new idols of the modern times. And then what else? We believe in the world of this world of matter. The idol is matter, right? This world of matter, this world of cause and effect, this world of material, this is the, we consider this to be the real world, not the world that is coming. Inni araka qawmaka fi dhalalim mubin. So uh, he says, do you take uh, idols as gods? Inni araka wa qawmuka. Oh, oh dad, oh father, uh, I see you and your nation fi dhalalim mubin in the wrong way clearly. وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And we showed Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam the malakut, the, the spiritual realities of the heavens and the earth لِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So that he would be of those who had certain faith. فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلِ رَآهُ كَوْكَبًا And so when the night time came, right, he saw a kawkaba, he saw a star, okay? Qala hadha rabbi. So is he doing this out of da'wah? Or is this like an evolutionary thing that happened? Most likely he's doing this as a form of da'wah to make people think, to make people ponder. But he probably is going through this in a way that he at some level went through himself. This this kind of like uh, understanding that this is not God and this is not God and this is not God. And in this environment that was completely idol worshipping and did not believe in one God at all, he was the lone man who stood up in the belief in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine that. 
فلما جن عليه الليل so when the night time came رأه كوكبا he saw a star قال هذا ربي he said this is my رب فلما أفلا so when that star you know when it went away right قال لا أحب الآفلين I don't like those things that disappear and go away فلما رأه رأه القمر when he saw the moon he said, this is my, maybe this is my Rabb, this moon. So when that vanished, if my Rabb would not guide me, I would have definitely been on the wrong way. So he threw his aql, despite all the customs and stereotypes and traditions of his people, he was able to go with his fitra. He was able to keep his fitra alive, his natural self alive. So when he saw the sun, you know, out there rising, right? This must be my God. This is bigger. So when that vanished, when that went away, he said, I'm completely free and innocent from what you make partners to Allah. <coughs> it's possible this was his form of making da'wah. Allahu A'lam. Inni wajahtu wajhya lilladhi fatir as-samawati wal-ard. Hanifa wa ma'ana min al-mushrikeen. I turn my face to the one who has created the heavens and the earth. Hanifa, just completely focused on him. Wa ma'ana min al-mushrikeen. And I will make no partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't accept any partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَحَاجَهُ قَوْمُهُ His people, they argued with him. قَالَ He said, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa sallam said, أَتُحَاجُونَ نِي فِي اللَّهِ قَدْ هَدَانِ Do you argue with me? Now, see, they're trying to argue with the Prophet. So now, the example of Ibrahim, their great forefather, is being given here. أَتُحَاجُونَ نِي فِي اللَّهِ وَقَدْ هَدَانِ Do you argue with me about Allah when Allah has already guided us? وَلَا أَخَافُ مَا تُشْرِكُونَ بِي Now I don't fear these fake gods that you do shirk with because these are not real gods. إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ رَبِّي شَيْئًا If Allah wants to do something to me then that will happen. وَاسِعَ رَبِّ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ إِلْمَ Allah's knowledge over everything is complete. أَفَلَا تَتَذَكَّرُونَ Do you not consider, do you not reflect, do you not ponder? وَكَيْفَ أَخَافُ مَا أَشْرَكْتُمْ وَلَا تُخَافُونَ أَنْتُمْ أَشْرَكْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ عَلَيْكُمْ سُلْطَانًا How is it that you think I should fear these fake gods when you are yourself وَلَا تُخَافُونَ أَنَّكُمْ أَشْرَكْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ When you're not fearing the fact that you're making partners to Allah, the, the real God. مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ عَلَيْكُمْ سُلْطَانًا For which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down no authority. إِنِّي إِنِّي which of the two groups do you think is more secure? In kuntum ta'lamun, if you truly know. This ayah is very important, the answer to this. Those people who have iman and their iman has no dhulm in it, no darkness in it, no shirk in it. Because most people believe in Allah, but then they also believe in, they rely on, they, they think their benefits and harm come from other sources other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their, their harm and their benefit is in the hands of others. So, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبَسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِذُلْمٍ Those people who believe and their iman has no dhulm on it. أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ أَمْنُوا وَهُمْ مُحْتَدُونَ For these people is aman, for peace and tranquility, and they are the ones that are guided. تِلْكَ هُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَهَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ These are some of the arguments that were given to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam ala qawmi over his nation. Meaning from Allah, he gave them the example of these fake gods, the sun and the moon and the star and all these other things. He, he had, they had no answer to him. So when they had no answer to him, then they tried to do, they put him in the fire. Then they took it to the next level of aggression. We raise in ranks whoever we will. Inna Rabbaka Hakimun Alim. Indeed, your Rabb is most Hakim, most wise, most Alim, most knowledgeable. Wahabna lahu Ishaqa wa Yaqub. And we gave Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam 
the gift of Ishaq and Yaqub. Kullan hadayna, we guided them all. Wa nuhan hadayna, min qabl, and before that, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was also guided. Min dhurriyatihi, Da'uda wa Sulaiman wa Ayyuba wa Yusufa wa Musa wa Harun. And from their zuriya, from their offspring was Da'ud and Sulaiman and Ayyub and Yusuf and Musa and Harun. Salamun ala al-mursaleen. وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِي الْمُحْسِنِينَ And this is how we, we are, we give ihsan, we give the best reward. And this is how we reward those people who do good. وَزَكَرِيَ وَيَحْيَ وَعِيسَ وَإِلْيَاسِ And Zakariya and Yahya and Ilyas and Isa and Ilyas, كُلُّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ They are of the righteous and they are also of the offspring of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Meaning, these are all children of the offspring of Yahya, uh, of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And Muhammad here, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is also the, uh, from the offspring of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And that line, do you know that line of prophets that was sent on the side of, from, of Ishaq alayhi salatu wasalam, they all believed in one God. Your forefather Ibrahim believed in one God. Right? Wa Ismail wa wal Yas'a wa Yunus wa Luta. And same point, and Ismail, and Yas'a, and Yunus, and Lut, we favored them all over all of humanity. Some among the fathers, and their descendants, and their uh, and their brothers we chose them so in that line different people it wasn't like one straight line it was different people in that line so now if it was different people in that line so it went from that line to the line of Ismail too this is the path, the guidance of Allah. He guides to it whoever He wills, meaning Allah wills, or whoever wills, meaning the person who has the niyyah, the intention, an ibadihi, min ibadihi, to his ibadah. Walaw ashraku lahabitat anhum ma kanu ya'malun. And if they did shirk, then all their good deeds would have gone to waste. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحُكْمَ وَالنَّبُوَةَ These are the prophets before that we gave them the book and the hukma, the hukm and the nabuwa. We gave them the authority to be the leaders and the pro, to be pro, in prophethood. In 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 yakfur biha هَؤُلَاءِ قَدْ قَدْ كُلْ كُلْ فَقَدْ وَكَّلْنَا بِهَا قَوْمًا لَيْسُوا بِهَا كَافِرِينَ so, Prophet, if these Quraysh people deny you about this, those people that carry the scripture today, meaning the, the Bani Israel, the Jews, if you ask them about this, they will tell you that this is the, this is, they would not deny this. لَيْسُوا بِهَا كَافِرِينَ وَكَلْنَا بِهَا قَوْمًا That a group of people already have, uh, have, have this, you know, um, they have been, they're the custodians of, of, of this knowledge. The Jews, you can ask them about, uh, about all these people that are from the descendants of Ibrahim who taught the oneness of God. These are the people Allah has guided. And of their guidance, you have to follow. Look. The Prophet ﷺ said to them, look, I'm not asking for any reward. I'm not asking for any salary. I'm not asking to be a king. I'm not asking for anything. I'm just, in huwa illa dhikra lil alameen. This is the reminder from the Lord of the worlds. Ma qadarullah haqqa qadri. They didn't value Allah as Allah ought to be valued. Now this verse is very interesting. Now like I told you, this... <coughs> <coughs> this surah was revealed towards the last part of the Makki phase, okay? Now, you know, Sultan Maryam was revealed. So now, the talks with the Ahlul Kitab had already begun, even though the Prophet was in Mecca, but his news had reached Medina, right? And now, when the Prophet was claiming all these things, that a book has come to me, and, and, and even the Quraysh saw the similarity to what they used to hear about the Jews, and what the Jews used to tell them about their religion, they used to, so now when they wanted to verify, you know, they're like, listen to the Prophet and they're giving the information to the Jewish community and the Jewish community is coming back and responding to the Quraysh. No, 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 reality is this. 
oh no, Muhammad's wrong because, and you know, just like they said, oh no, these Quraysh people are better than the Muslims, right? So just like today, Christians will say, oh, these other people, they're better than the Muslims, even though the Muslims are the closest to Christians in many ways. And the, the Jews, will, Israel will say, no, no, India is better than all the Muslim countries combined. They, you know, even though Israel is an ideological state. And so those that are ideologically closer to Israel are the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا قَدْرُ اللَّهِ حَقَّ قَدْرِ They didn't value Allah as He ought to be valued. They think they just can play Allah. They just think they can play Islam. Right? Now, the Quraysh, because the answer came from Medina about this question. إِذْ قَالُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَى بَشَرٍ مِّنْ شَيْءٍ because they said, the Jews, they said, Oh no, nothing has been sent down to any human being. Qul, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Who is the one who sent the book to Musa that had light and guidance for people? And you've made this now into papers, right? Some of it you show. وَتُخْفُونَ كَثِيرًا But a lot of it you hide from the people. And by the way, this is one thing about the Jewish religion. A lot, a lot of the Jewish religion is not even properly understood by Jews even. And so there are parts, you know, where they have the Torah, the Torah which is mentioned in the Quran over and over again. But then they have the Talmud, and they have the Zuhar, and they have the Kabbalah, Kabbalah. Sorry, my dyslexia gets to me sometimes, um, even in English. And of course in Arabic, it sometimes makes it me hard for me to say even the easiest words. Uh, so, subhanAllah. So, <clears throat> so here, you know, even most Jews don't know how the hidden truths of Judaism. Okay. Uh, and Kabbalah, the Zohar, which is a book of theirs that very Jews, a few Jews have read, and I believe in most of the Jews want to be true to Moses, they should just stick to the Torah, the, the book, because all these other books, uh, I think there are things in it that many Jews may not be very okay with. Um, and then, you know, the Kabbalah, the hidden, the hidden, the tradition of hidden knowledge. So they have this hidden tradition, right? And even till today, they hide the, the, uh, the, black, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, for example, it's under the, it's in, under the Jewish authority. For the most part, all those Dead Sea Scrolls. And so, you know, it is what it is. But this part that they hide a lot of the scriptures, it's true even till today. So, And they have taught you, these Jews have now taught the people of Mecca. Uh, because they were in, you know, doing business with the Jews and so on and so forth, especially after coming the pro of the Prophet, you know, they were asking this person's calling himself a Prophet like Moses, you know, what's going on here? And and so now they the, they they were the ones teaching the idol worshippers the information about the Prophets and everything, so that when the Prophets are saying he's a Prophet, they knew we need to go to the Jews to ask this. What? You learned the things that nor you knew nor your forefathers knew. Who sent it down? Allah sent down the book. Just leave them, O Prophet Let them dive into the things that they're playing. Let them, let them do what they're doing. Now the next ayah is very important because it's talking about the methodology of the Prophet in his da'wah. And now this book that Allah has sent down that is full of blessings So we have sent down this book confirming that is between your hands and so that you will warn again with what? Quran, Quran, Quran this is coming over and over again Okay the mother city, meaning the capital city. This is where, you know, the prophets always dealt with the center, where the elite were. Okay? Umul Qura, the mother of the cities. And then after that, after you do da'wah in the center, then what is around it and around it. And this is how you extend your da'wah from there. 
وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ And those who believe in the hereafter, يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ Those who believe in the hereafter, they believe in this book. وَهُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ And they are guardians of their prayers. مَنْ أَذْلَمُ مِنْ افْتَرْ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَقَالَ أُوْهِيَا إِلَيَّ وَلَمْ يُوْهَا إِلَيْ شَيْءٌ Who can be more wrong than the person who, say, who invents a lie against Allah and says something has been revealed to me when nothing has actually been revealed to that person. وَمَنْ قَالَ سَأُنزِلُ مِثْلَ مَا أُنزِلَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ And I will, I will bring down something that is similar to what Allah has revealed. Like how can that be? Nothing can be equal to the Qur'an and that challenge is, is outdated now because no one has been able to produce any Arabic literature equal to the Qur'an. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ And now remember, if you were only able to see the wrongdoers who say such things, at the moments of their death, when they're in the pains of their death, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَبْسِطُ إِلَيْهِمْ إِخْرُجُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ When they're bringing out their hands, extending their hands to take away their souls, saying, bring out yourselves. الْيَوْمَ يُجْزَوْنَ الْعَزَابَ الْحُونِ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ and today we're going to punish you for the things that you were saying about Allah without any just cause. وَكُنْتُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِهِ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ And you were proud and arrogant regarding the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came to you. وَلَقَدْ جِعْتُمُونَ فُرَادًا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً Now this is another very important point. You will go back to Allah alone. Okay. كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً The same way that you, we created you the first time. Okay? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, so over here a few important points. وَلَقَدْ جِعْتُمُونَ Allah will say, you have now come. جِعْتُمُونَ You've come to me. فُرَادًا Alone. There's no, there's no, you know, entourage or anybody, security or any bodyguard. No one's coming to you. And, like we created you the first time. The first time you also, when you were created the first time with your ruh, when your soul was created, when your ruh was created, when you were before Allah, at that time also you had no father, no mother, no sister, no entourage, no bodyguard, no nothing. لَقَدْ جِعْتُمُونَا فُرَادًا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً وَتَرَكْنَا مَا خَوَّلْنَاكُمْ And now you've left behind the things behind your back, the things that we had given you. Now we don't see those, you know, intercessors, those things that used to worship other than Allah with you. Those things that you were so sure about that you, you would associate as partners to Allah. تَقَطَّعَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَضَلَّ عَنْكُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَزْمَعُونَ So now, in Allah فَالِكُ الْحَبِّ وَالنَّوَىٰ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who cleaves open, you know, the date, the seed is in the ground, and how Allah opens it up, and the, 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 the beginning of the trees start from that little date, right? فَالِكُ الْحَبِّ وَالنَّوَىٰ So Allah is the one who opens up the grain and the date seed. يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes out the يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ He takes the living out of the dead وَمُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ And He takes the dead out of the uh, out from the life ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ فَأَنَّا تُؤْفَكُونَ How you are deluded فَالِكُ الْأَسْبَاحِ And you know in the morning when the light comes in, the, the daybreak, وَجَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ سَكَنَ And he has made the night time a place for rest, a time for rest, وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرْ حُسْبَانَ And the, the sun and the moon, they followed a calculated uh, path. ذَلِكَ These exact same words come in Surah Al-Yaseen for the shams وَالْقَمَرْ ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزُ الْعَلِيمُ This is the the taqdeer, the determination that Al-Aziz Al-Alim has made. That is the one who has done this, who is Aziz Al-Alim. Thalika uh, taqdeer Al-Aziz. This is determination, this determination is done by the one who has, is the one with all power and all knowledge. 
هو الذي جعل لكم نجوما لتحتدوا بها ان الله سبحانه وتعالى is the one who made the stars so you'll be guided by it في ظلمات البر والبحر in the darknesses of the land and the sea قد فصلنا الايات لقوم يعلمون and we've made clear to you our sign our uh, uh, our we've made clear our signs for a people who will know هو الذي انشاكم من نفس واحد and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who started your life with one soul, right? فَمُسْتَقَرَّ وَمُسْتَدَعْ And and you have uh, a place to, to have stability, مُسْتَقَرْ and مُسْتَوْدَعْ uh, a place to rest, you could say قَدْ فَصَّلْنَا الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَفْقَهُونَ And we have made clear to you the, our signs for the people that ponder. You know, this all showing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for what? So that people can come to Tawheed of Allah, to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And over here, a great ayah regarding the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after showing or trying to demonstrate through the history of the prophets, uh, uh, and particularly in this case, Prophet Ibrahim, but also Musa, Isa, the, how the Prophet is similar to them, and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هو الذي أنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به نبات كل شيء. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sends down from the sky water فأخرج به, and because of that water, uh, فأخرج به نبات, the plants that come out of every type. فأخرج به منه خضرا, خضرا. You know, it's very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the greenness. The green, because that's where the photosynthesis part happens, right? نُخْرِجُ مِنْهُ حَبَّ مُتَرَاكِبًا And then what happens comes out from it. حَبَّ مُتَرَاكِبًا Grains in like layers. مِنَ النَّخْلِ Of the date palm tree. مِنْ طَلْعِهَا قِنْوَانٌ And it's, you know, it's branches. They will have these dates, clusters of dates. دَانِيَةٌ And hanging low, low. وَجَنَّةٍ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ And dra uh, the gardens of grape. وَزَيْتُونَ And trees of uh, the olive. And رُمَّانٍ And the pomegranate. Right? مُتَشَابِحْ غَيْرَ مُتَشَابِحْ Now I'll show this to you in a second here. Uh, so these are the dates, right? They look like one another, but yet they don't look what They look similar, but they're not similar. مُتَشَابِحْ so Many of them look alike. But some, there are some variants too. Allah doesn't create even one snowflake that it looks like another flow, snowflake. If Allah created something, it is somehow in some way unique. Otherwise, Allah wouldn't have created it. These are the gra grapes. These grapes, they look alike, but yet they're varied. They have some variances. They have some differences, but they also look the same. Right? This is the, uh, the tree for the olive. Okay? This is the tree for the pomegranates. Okay? This is the create. This is Allah. This is what He can do. But you have to follow His guidance. Okay. Mutashabiha wa ghayra mutashabi. Unzur ila thamarihi. And look at the fruits. Look at those fruits. They not only taste delicious. They not only look good. They look aesthetically pleasing. But then, there. What is the relationship between trees and humans? No relationship. Why would a tree give food to human beings and animals? Why would a tree do that? Right? But this is by the will of the one who has designed and determined all these great things. And, and uh, anyway, إِذَا ثَمَرَ بِهِ وَأَثْمَرَ أُنظُرْ إِلَى ثَمَرِهِ Then go ahead, look at its fruits. وَيَنْعِهِ And how it, then its ripeness. Who makes this process, right? إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكُمْ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ يُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, in this are signs for people that believe. If you want to believe, the whole universe is there to observe and to look at its beauty and its function and how every piece of it is unique, every piece has a function. It's all there for us to see. وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَكَاءَ الْجِنِّ خَلَقَهُمْ And they make for, جَعَلُوا uh, لِلَّهِ uh, They make for Allah partners, the jinns. خَلَقَهُمْ Even though He is the one who created these jinns, right? وَخَرَكُوا لَهُ بَنِينَ And they fabricate Banin wal banat the, the daughters, they used to say the angels are the daughters of Allah. And they, the jinn, you know, other things they used to say is the sons of Allah. بِغَيْرِ ilm Without any knowledge. And, and, the, and the, of course the Christians, they say Allah has taken for himself her son. أَسْتَغْفِرُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَمَّا يَسِفُونَ all Allah is perfect. Allah is perfect. Ta'ala, most high. أَمَّا يَسِفُونَ From what they try, from what they try to associate Allah. 
or what they try to uh, uh, d describe or the attributes they try to give to Allah. But the Usamawati wal Ard, Allah is the one who started the creation of the heavens and the earth. Neo ex helio. Ibda, Shawrila considers Ibda as one of the three most basic attributes of Allah. Allah brings something into existence from non existence. This is Ibda. But the Usamawati wal Ard, Anna yakuna lahu walad. How could he have a son? Lam yakun lahu sahiba. He has no companion. He has no he has no son. Khalaka kulla shay and he created all things. Everything you see is created. Wa huwa bi kulli shayin alim and he has the knowledge of all things. Dhalikum Allahu rabbukum la ilaha illahu khaliku kulli shay. That is your Allah. He is your Rabb. La ilaha illahu khaliku kulli shay. He created everything. Fa'buduhu worship him. Wa huwa bi kulli shayin wakil and he is the disposer of all things. He is the one who he he is the one who's the guardian of all things. La tudrikul absar wa huwa yudrikul absar. No sight, no insight can attain him, but he can his wa huwa yudrikul absar. But he is the one who can see and perceive all things. Wa huwa latiful khabir, and he is al latif. He has subtle. He's very subtle and khabir, and he's all knowing. جَاءَكُمْ بَصَائِرٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ Look, there has come to you بَصَائِرٌ بَصِيرًا Enlightenment and knowledge from your Rabb. فَمَنْ أَبْصَرَ فَلِنَفْسِ Whoever sees, he sees for himself. وَمَنْ عُمِيَ فَعَلَيْهَا Whoever is blind, it's on him. وَمَا أَنَا عَلَيْكُمْ بِحَفِيذٍ And I am not over you a guardian. I'm not responsible in the end for you. You're responsible for yourself. وَكَذَلِكُ نُصَرِّفُ الْآيَاتِ and they will say to the Prophet, it seems like you studied, you studied a lot. How did you get this knowledge? You're uneducated. But the fact is, this is just revelation coming from Allah to a people that have knowledge. They already have knowledge and they'll say, yes, this is the same. This is the proper information, meaning from the people of the book. اتبِعْ مَا أُهُيَا إِلَيْكَ O Prophet ﷺ, follow that which has been revealed to you مِنْ رَبِّكَ from your رَبْ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهُ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And stay away and just avoid the mushrikeen, the people that do shirk. لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا أَشْرَكُوا If Allah wanted, they wouldn't have done shirk. وَمَا جَعَلْنَكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيزًا And we've not appointed you as a master over them or a guardian over them or being responsible for them. وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِوَكِيلٍ وَلَا وَلَا Do not curse. وَلَا تَصُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Don't curse those who call upon other than Allah. Meaning don't curse their gods. فَيَصُبُّ اللَّهِ They will curse Allah. أَدُوًا Out of animosity. بِغَيْرِ ilm Without knowledge. ذَلِكَ زَيِّنَا كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ عَمَلَهُمْ And you know, this is how shaitan basically makes beautiful in them their actions. If you ever talk to some people, they just like cursing the, the true religion out. You know, anyway. ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ أَرْجِئُكُمْ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And then you will return back to your Rabb uh, and فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ and he will tell you of the things that you had been doing. وَأَقْسِمُوا بِاللَّهِ جَحْدَ أَيْمَانِهِ And they swear by Allah, right? لَإِنْ جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَةٌ لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهَا this, just bring this one ayah, this one ayah, just bring it to us. We'll really believe this time. Say the ayat, they're all with Allah. What will make you under have the consciousness, the understanding? If it comes to them, the signs, if another sign is given to them, if another sign is shown to them, they will still not believe. Actually, it's interesting because in the New Testament, Jesus also, you know, after giving them so many miracles, so many miracles, he then said, there's no miracle for you now, except for such and such, which I'm not going to go into right now, but except for the one which he was talking about him, that he will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically about him being, uh, the attempt to kill him, but he will actually not be killed. Uh -huh. No sign will be given to you except for the sign of Jonah. This is what he said. And we turn away their hearts and their their, their sights. 
like just as soon as you know they decide not to believe when their hearts change then Allah changes them because they're not inclined so Allah turns them away so leave them going blindly in the direction that they're going O Prophet so inshallah before we finish uh, I just want to mention a few things that are important Shawli Ulam Muhaddas Delbi again in his Fawz al-Kabir mentions something that's very important between Suz al-Anam and Suz al-A'raf which are the next two, this is the next pair that is coming and that is Tazkir bi ala illa and Tazkir bi ayyam illa Tazkir bi ala illa is Allah reminds you with by showing you the date palm trees showing you the olive oil trees his creation when Ibrahim is being talked about he's looking at the creation look at what Allah has created you don't see the oneness of Allah and so on and so forth and then Sutul Araf will focus more on the Anba Rusul and Qasus al Anbiya. The stories of the Prophets, what happened with the previous nations, how they behaved, how they behaved with their Prophets, and then finally how they were terminated when they, did, uh, uh, they refused to obey the Prophet. So these two aspects will go side by side, side by side, side by side, by side by side throughout the whole Quran basically. Either Allah is showing you His signs, Tazkir bi. Uh, reminding you the truth by what Allah, His creation, His power, and His beauty, and all the things He's done, or reminding you by the, the days of Allah, the days of Allah, the history that Allah recounts, by that Allah is showing you. Um, now, uh, this also could include because Al Maliki Yom the Day of Judgment, is also a day after all. So, Ayyam Allah could also include. Reminding you about the, the the destruction of rejection, what happens when you reject in this life, and also what happens if you reject in the next life, and also in the simultaneously. So I'm adding this point to Shawlila's thought that he's written in Fawzul Kabir myself. And then if you, those who believe in the Prophet, how they have victory, and the, and then you have the victory in the hereafter. So these two things go side by side. So this is Sutul An'am, and then you will see Sutul A'raf. Uh, it'll talk more about the historical aspects of prophethood and so on and so forth. So inshallah, let's continue with Sutan Anam, and then after that we'll get into Sutan Araf. So um, inshallah ta'ala, we end here for today. Make sure to subscribe today, and make sure you like, and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. أشهد أن لا إله